What is going on, everybody? We are live tonight here again. I'm honestly surprised that I made it. Fucking exhausted. Absolutely exhausted, dude. Another day shooting USPSA. And uh, it was like 80 degrees out today, which is nice because it's starting to get nicer out. It's not super cold anymore, but um, it was cold in the morning. And so I dressed appropriately and then just was wearing a hoodie and pants all day, running around in the sun, <clears throat> whooping that ass, Kyle. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle fucking came out and I'm uh, still getting pretty bad echo. Um, Kyle came out to shoot USPSA. It was only his second USPSA match ever. Um, he usually does IDPA and, uh, he was talking all that shit, all that woo wop to bam. And, uh, yeah, no, he got the smoke. He massively got the smoke out of, uh, how many people was it? Hold on. It was super fun though, dude. Again, if you're not out shooting competition, I don't know what's wrong with you. It's a great time an amazing time it's tremendous believe me but it's also <clears throat> pretty affordable to do so and definitely is a good skill set to work on let's see here um now i gotta match overall we got anybody out there four people Let's smash that them. they're all feds say nothing yet. nobody nobody's commenting yet these are all the no, feds that nobody. watch make sure you're smashing that like button fed boys i appreciate it so let's see here out of 79 people shooting all different classes again i shoot limited division uh which is 140 millimeter length mags tops which for me and my staccato sti holds 21 and uh no ports no comps no red dots so uh, I'm just shooting an iron sighted gun. And uh, so there's other people that are shooting dots and lights and rifles and everything else. And so the overall score out of 79 people, I got 23rd, which is not awful. And there's like pro shooters that show up to this shit. Yeah. Um, and then in my division or uh, yeah, my, my division, cause my class, I'm a C class shooter, but I'm about to be a B here shortly. Um <clears throat> But out of my division, which is limited, I took second. So, but, which shy. is, it was only out of eight people because nobody shoots fucking limited anymore because yeah. the fucking everybody's shooting carry optics or now they have limited optics because everybody has to bolt a fucking dot to the gun, um, which is fine, whatever, dude. But you better also know how to shoot irons in case that mother grabber fails one of these days. But uh, yeah, it's cool. The The only dude that beat me, is an a-class shooter and he shoots major so he gets extra points for worse hits uh because he's shooting a 40 compared to my nine and i beat him on a two out of the six stages and uh the rest of the time we were just neck and neck so but super cool dude and we had a really good time i want to give a huge shout out to the homie luther dude of the lex variety dude waifu is life he, he shows up today this motherfucker shows up he's got some of the coolest guns in the world dude we got dale hayes in the house dude what is up, dude? Is Blake still shooting the competitions? I don't know. I don't think he has in uh, the last few. We're all hyping on him to get out there, but you know how he gets. We got Tex Bullington in the house. What's up? What's up? What's up? Civil War watch party win, dude? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What's up, guys? We got Benjamin Knight in the house. Appreciate all you. Make your, make sure you're smashing that like button because it helps out a ton. And clearly nobody knows we're streaming here on Sunday like we do every Sunday. No, bro. 830 do. Central Standard Time. Um, on Sundays. nah, never on time at least. And I even texted scales. I was like, yo, I'm probably going to be a little late. And then I wasn't, you were late, dude. I was waiting you on you. We, no, I wasn't late at all, dude. I was you here on late. time. The only reason we didn't start directly at eight 30 was you wasn't even ready, dude. Was not even ready. Uh, but yeah, how can I be ready? I got the link. Bro. I sent you the link, dude. I that was the, the first thing I, I got did. It. Nah, dude. Yeah, dude. You're full of it, dude. Nah, dude. So full of it, your eyes are brown, dude. But yeah, shout out to the fucking. Trying to fix this shit. What? What do you fix? Fucking 3D printer. I ain't wanting to work right for me. 3D printer guns are illegal. Which is why you should print many, many more of them. But um. Yeah, shout out to the homie Luther, dude, of the Lex variety. He shows up today. Of course, he's got his OpsCore amps on, which are $1,200 ear pro with the cat ears, dude. The cat ear head wrap fucking thing. <clears throat> and he's got a full-size USP 45 that he had Cerakoted 
to look like the Tomb Raider gun, has the match comp on it with a surefire, and it's cut for a dot, and the barrel's ported. I don't know who the fuck he sent this gun to, <clears throat> but the fucking thing is sick, dude. You, you guys could get a glimpse of it uh, in the waifu edition of USPSA today, and uh, I posted them in one of my shorts. And First of all, that motherfucker can shoot, bro. The fucking I met him at USPSA like years ago, a couple years ago. He randomly came up to me. He's like, yo, are you terribly tactical? I'm like, yeah, dude. He's like, yeah, dude, I'm big into because I was asking him about like his HKs and stuff, because every time he's got super cool HK guns that he shows up and competes with. And uh, he's like, yeah, dude, I actually stumbled across some of your videos because I was, you know, watching USP videos or whatever HK yeah. videos. And he's like, yeah, dude. And so we started talking about that. And um yeah, dude, it was fucking sick, dude. This motherfucker can shoot, though, dude. Like, he is very accurate. He's he's quick. He's very ninja-like. He brings great honor to his family. And uh, the fucking just the cool... He had the coolest fucking gun out at the match today. And there's dudes walking around with five six thousand dollar twenty eleven, yeah. dude. And that was the fucking coolest gun, dude. So shout out to the homie Luth, dude. Shout out to him. Got the Tempted Adverse in the house. What's up, dude? Yo, with Jim. How is everyone doing? I just fucking... <clears throat> I was at the gym earlier, dude. Just working out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had pizza and beer and fucking. No, dude, it's a workout, dude. If you've never got out and shot competition, dude, especially because it's not even just because, like, when you see the shit, like, you're only shooting for a couple seconds, basically, yeah. comparatively speaking to the whole day. But. You know, you're running around, short bursts of energy, whatever, but then you're also up and down that field all day, pasting targets and resetting yeah. targets up and pulling steel targets and this, that, and the third. And then uh, you're out there, you know, in the heat and shit all day running around. And then at the end of it, you have to tear down everything and then fucking yeah. go drag it to the shed and fucking. So it's actually a pretty good, I got like 20 some thousand steps today and I haven't moved since I got back from competition. <laughs> so, so and fuck it's just a good time though so that's awesome good exercise because like you feel it in muscles that like you didn't know existed in your body because yeah. like you just like i don't know you used them and you don't usually use them because that's the cool thing about you know shooting competition or whatever is it makes you get into weird angles like um you know, and, and shoot from different positions and, and speed up and slow down. And like, so sometimes like, dude, especially if I don't drink enough Watts and it's a really hot day and like, you got to do like one of these bendy twisty boys to get around a corner to shoot just the edge of a target or something. You start cramping up and shit. You can feel it, but yeah, it's good times. Good times. Indeed, dude. Indubitably. We got the hypo Drake in the house. Never have. It doesn't seem like a thing in Indiana that I can find for whatever reason. Indiana definitely has a huge competition circuit. I know they have a really good three gun match um, in Porter, Indiana. I want to say something like that. It sounds familiar. Um, but yeah, they Indiana's definitely got get on practice score, P R A C T I score dot com, and uh, they'll show you all the matches available in your surrounding area. And it's free to sign up as, as an account. And then you would sign up for the matches through that account. Um, and then if you're going to shoot IDPA, get an IDPA membership, get a USPSA membership, whatever it is. That way, when you're shooting these matches, you actually get qualified and ranked. And, you know, you could go shoot nationals if you wanted, if you wanted to, you know, take it super seriously and whatever. But and if nonetheless, it's super fun. And other than that, it's really, really good training because you get to learn from a lot of people. A lot of people, excuse me, that know what the fuck they're talking about uh, and see how they do things, too, because not everybody is, you know, a verbal learner. Like they have to see how it's done uh, and then also get a chance to try it themselves. And, uh, <coughs> yeah, it's just a good time, man. It's a great investment in yourself, uh, in your firearms proficiency, and uh, it gives you an excuse to go out and buy like a cool race gun or something. And then the wife can't get mad at you, but it's it's a sport. I'm trying to be healthy, okay? I'm, you tell me to get a hobby. I'm getting out of the house. I'm trying to do something good. I'm giving you your space. You know, one of those things. So, but yeah, man. How is everybody doing, man? How, how are you doing, Scales? How was your day? How was your week? What's happened since the last time we talked, dude? I'm sure there's been several more interesting developments in the, uh, the new Florida man story, dude. That is your life mean, currently. Don't disappoint us now. Don't I mean, freaking you dare. much has gone down. I mean, <laughs> finally got all the railroad ties placed for the range. Now we just yeah. got to get dirt in. And then uh, and pack some holes in the wall, unfortunately. 
So what were you, what were you saying? What's behind the railroad ties? Behind the railroad ties on our property is a tree. And then on the neighbor's property, a bunch of vegetation for about a uh, hundred, another hundred yards. And then his house. Sick. And you're putting the dirt in front of the railroad ties. In front of the ties. yeah. And then do you have any plans on like, what what is your ideal target array going to look like? I'm sure you're going to have fixed targets that, in theory, would stay there. Something of the steel variety. Yeah. You definitely have to have like a plywood backed, flat, fucking zeroing target stand yeah. thing out there somewhere. Yeah. You know. Um, so, primary <clears throat> goal is to have at least one steel silhouette. You know, one third size silhouette. Uh, probably going to set up a. Uh, a stand of some sort for paper targets either next to or behind that so I could just lay that down and have the paper stand for paper targets and then an array of an array you pistol say. and rimfire fucking gong swingers, the fucking coyote I already got, whatever the hell steel targets so yeah those little steely boys that we were shooting with the beeb guns yeah. are the, those are just rim fire rated right you couldn't yeah. smack that with a nine mil yeah, no no um so what i don't know i mean i i know they exist but they're just not as common like unless you grab some in, in a tack pack or something at some point but like most steel targets are like multi-caliber rated and rifle yeah. rated if it's yeah. ar 500 so yeah. what do you mean with the distinction so, between the pistol targets and then the... so even a lot of because i've been looking into the steel targets and everything a lot of like the three eighths inch steel targets the ar 500 targets aren't actually rated for full power like five five six at close ranges well right yeah they say 100 yards or more yeah you're supposed to be shooting and so and it's not so much that the target itself is going to be a pistol only target Right. It's more so I'm going to utilize those as a rimfire and pistol only target. Right. Because the thing is, is like I have that whole width of the range that I've built, which is three railroad ties wide. But the primary which, how, target. How it, wide is that in feet across? Well, each one is like eight, eight ten? feet in some change, each tie. Now they are overlapped. The two sidewalls are overlapped a little bit on the inside. And then also angled outwards. So realistically, the actual face of the range is probably about 20 foot. Yeah. That's still not but, bad, though. You can get a lot crammed into there. But primarily, we are going to utilize the center section, which will have the dirt, a tie right behind it, more dirt, another stack of ties. And that's going to be for our rifle cartridges, 7.62, 5.56, 308, whatever the hell we're shooting. Rifle's going to be centralized there. Right. So we don't want to, with the outside walls, it will be dirt and then just one set of ties. And we don't want to put anything too high-powered onto those sides. Right, you'll plant it in that dude's living room. Exactly. And so that's where I'd have, like, rimfire and pistol targets set up, you know is more on the outsides yeah <clears throat> indeed and i i assume too honestly that while you still always want to know your your backstop and what's beyond it and have a safe one in this and the third yep. especially considering shooting pistols and or rimfire you know they make those little ground targets that yeah. like you just put there and they're still angled to deflect the rounds down into the, mm -hmm. the ground or whatever. And, you know, with pistols, and you could set that probably up anywhere on the property yeah. and yeah. not have to worry about it. Yeah. So, you know, you could even make it more rifle oriented as far as like the, the main stay range and then just have little piss. I mean, obviously you could set it up however, but it seems like you'd have a decent enough, you know, it's kind of like a honest outlaw layout, uh, with like he's got the same thing going on kind of i think and uh his <coughs> he's got like a million fucking targets in his shit um i can't really stand that dude anymore he used to be decent but now he's a fucking industry plant but uh but yeah that, that, that's super cool the setup is yeah. definitely gonna be nice you're gonna enjoy having a fucking range in your it's backyard gonna dude. Amazing, it's gonna bro. cost you money I though can't fucking wait oh, you're gonna, gonna be shooting up all your ams money. dude i know it's a problem 
to be the biggest problem. This is what I'm going to say, though. If you fucking have a built-in fucking range on your prop and you are not utilizing it, dude, because you're going to fucking, you're going to get done with the range, you're going to fucking go shoot on it once or twice, and then that's going to be the end of it, dude. You're going to fucking, ah, no, I don't feel like it. Ah, nah, it's, it's there. It'll always be there, dude. And then a fucking hurricane, dude. Or fucking something, a tsunamis, dude. Johnny Tsunami's gonna come through and fucking fuck you, blow your whole range away, dude. And you're gonna be mad that you didn't use it while you had the chance. Bro, you know how often I was at fucking rinks shooting. Yeah, but that's different. I had to drive and pay to get into that bitch. You lived like two seconds away, dude. You could have easily walked, you lazy fuck. I had to drive there. You didn't have to. You chose I mean, to. If I think I would have had problems walking down the street with fucking rifle cases and shit. Nah, dude, you get a little. You find first of all totally legal. Second of all, you get yourself a little red flyer wagon, pull right behind you. You'd be fine. A so wheelbarrow, steal my perhaps. Wagon out the parking lot, bro. <laughs> yeah, Blake's ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he needs a new one, dude. He popped his fucking tie. But where will the belt fed section be? That's a valid question. Valid, valid question. That will be figured out when I have the money for a belt fed or the other means of I think acquiring you should, a belt fed. I think fed. you should start selling copious amounts of illicit substances so you can afford yes. a belt fed. Yes. But if I can afford the belt fed, then I can afford to pay somebody else to make the range taller and wider for me so I can shoot it. So Indeed. Or are you over here drinking Smirnoff Ices? What the fuck is that? No, oh, the Mike's Extra Soft Yeesh. Lemonade, dude. The Splemonade, dude. We got first one Yeesh. shot in the house. A-dubs, everybody, dude. Tempted Adverse says, I need to get out to the property and do some maintenance on the range. Need to cut back some spring growth. Yeah, dude. <clears throat> That's what I say about my peen sometimes, dude. Uh, <laughs> but there's no growth. There's no growth, dude. At least as far as the peen is concerned. He needs to cut this, back everything else. So, he <laughs> yeah, so it, it looks, looks like it grows. Right. He's finally gotta, seen it. Again. Right, dude. Honestly, it hasn't grown since I was a baby. That's uh, they say it's a medical condition though, so like I have nothing to be ashamed of because it's yeah, not yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. lesser of a man because yeah. of it. I just got bad genes, dude. Like I shop at Old Navy, but uh, <laughs> I protect you more than you'll ever know, dude. I don't know what's going on, dude. Hank, you for your cervix, dude. Thank you for your cervix, dude. But yeah, the fucking you crazy cats out here, dude. Why it's a slow night, dude. What's yeah. what is the occasion, dude? Did everybody yeah, die in World know. War Three already? We don't know about Maves. it. Maves, dude. It's fucked up, dude. Then I just gotta figure out what the hell I'm doing for a shooting table. And how I'm gonna build that out. Dude, go get a little yeah. fucking plastic lifetime tape. Nah, dude. And I need something just... a little bit more stable than that. As far as like just for zeroing in rifles and shit like that. Then yeah, but if you're not gonna level tape. it, it really That's doesn't matter. It's required. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's required, dude. No. It's preferred. But how the fuck do people zero a rifle whilst laying prone on the ground? It's preferred. If you have the opportunity, if you're okay. building a range, yeah. you might as well build the range. But Until you're building <clears throat> out this concrete platform on sand that is then going to come off of levels and settles anyways, then it's all Listen, dude. Not. Dig it out. Lay down some gravel. Rebuild. Still Lay down a couple. Sand. Nah, put some steel the sand in there. Goes for fucking a couple of rebars, of dude. Feet. Nah, you'd be fine, dude. Just dig no, it out. Dude. Yeah, then you'll have a well on the no property, dude. You'll have, you a, well have a well on the, well property. On the property. Then you'll have two. Two is one. One is <laughs> not. Have dude. a pod too. <laughs> yeah, but it's not potable, dude. It is once you boil it. Benjamin Knight says, "Damn good vid- vehicle video impromptu last night. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's definitely uh, looking scary. World, World War Three has been mid so far. I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> it's definitely, mid. it's definitely just a bunch of fucking propaganda. And really, they could be fucking showing us fucking videos and pictures of fucking." a bunch of fake shit or some old shit or some fucking CGI shit. And how the fuck would you know? You know? So unless you're actually there, how do you even really know what's going on? But what we do know for sure is that it's all a propaganda push. It's all bullshit. You should not fall into it and be in hype and worried about fucking what's going on everywhere else, except for here. Primarily you think about America first because that's, you're an American. Um, but understand that these outside contributing factors do definitely affect you in a lot of ways. Like I mentioned in the video, whether it be supply of food or water or ammo or guns or whatever it may be. Uh, and then on top of it, <clears throat> even though a small likelihood of probability, there is still, it is possible that we do get attacked here in this country, either on the soil with Red Dawn style shit or they're fucking sending nukes or fucking missiles or whatever. So, you know, just understand that you 
while you can't be prepared for everything, you should definitely be conscientious and mindful thinking of trying to do so at least everything in moderation, well-rounded, you know, so no matter what happens, quote unquote, you've got something to help you deal with it. Uh, and the most important thing you can have to help you deal with that is the skills and the knowledge, but you also need the equipment, dude. So, you know, it's the, the whole in the movies, we're making tourniquets out of belts while in theory could work, not ideal. You know what I'm saying? So shit like that. You should have the proper equipment that you hopefully never need to use, but God forbid you need to use it. You better fucking have it. So that's that on that. It is 50 yards at the moment. We're probably going to try and cut some of the woods back and try to get it to at least 100. Uh, 50 yards is decent, though, man. I mean, it <clears throat> you can get a 50, 200-yard zero. You can do a Marine Corps 36-yard zero, which is 36 to 300. Um, you know, that you could do a lot of – I don't know how it's set up, but I assume you have a little bit of lateral movement area where you could do some running and gunning, some side-to-side shits and whatever. Um, it Dude, I, if I had 50 yards where I could just walk out the house and fucking shoot any gun, that, that would be sick, dude. That would be sick as fuck. Sounds um, like it's not directly attached to his property, to his home at least. Well, either way, still. You know, your own private still, little range, awesome, dude. Man. I'd I'd be fine with fucking 25-yard private range, a 10-yard private range. Dude, I'd fucking bust a 50 out in that motherfucker. <laughs> Hope we don't get any ricochets, as they say. <clears throat> but black dynamite, I zero prone, dude. Yeah, dude. I know, right? I live in a target rich environment too. Haha, <laughs> Florida and sucks to build a Florida land sucks to build on. It does so that's it riddled me this then, Batman. How the fuck did they build the house, dude? If you can't build a little fucking six by fucking eight concrete slab, how the fuck did they build a house there? Did everybody say the house was level? It should be. <laughs> Ideally. I had almost given it to you not. <laughs> well, the old house wasn't either. So exactly. half the shit was sinking into the fucking. As long as it all settles evenly, you're fine. You yeah, know? I don't know. It's when this side starts settling more than this side does, then shit starts cracking. Yeah, I don't know about the the geometry on that one, but That's first one shot says I found a cat tourniquet on Sheen for like three dollars. It's just as good, right? Yeah, yeah most bro. definitely, dude. Those are Actually, honestly, I, I heard those are better. Just use your, so yeah, you just and they're the best. Ca- those, bro, the one like, secret the internet doesn't want you to know. Do- donate the other ones you already have to yeah. somebody in need. Yeah, know? someone less fortunate that, yeah, uh, like you know, needs. So. You know, I don't, I don't need them, but I'll always take them. So, you know, feel free, you know. It could always be wider. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, most definitely, dude. Wider, See, that's longer. that's my issue, dude. Is It's like a fucking can of tuna, but it's about as tall as one, too. So I'm fucking, you know, and that's that's full chubs, dude. That's what they call me in high school. Um, I live in the woods. I can do what I want. Yeah, that's the best, really, dude. Yeah. That is the absolute best. You just do what you want, when you want, wherever you want, because it's your fucking prop. But yeah, dude. It has two creek washouts going through it. I need to get some culvert pipes so I can fill them in. And dude, fucking build some yeah. trenches, dude. Trench warfare, dude. Fucking start tunneling, dude. Go get you some of them t- tiny hat society motherfuckers. They'll build you a tunnel all the way through that shit. And then you can fucking train, dude. We're bringing it back, dude. World War One and Two vibes, dude. Trench yeah, warfare, dude. dude. It's coming back, dude. It's, it's hot, dude. It's, so, it's in vogue right now, dude. What is that, a phone for ants? <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know why you're laughing. I'm sure you haven't seen that movie. Fucking Zoolander. You should. It's pretty funny. Pretty fucking funny. Um, yeah, dude. Fucking. I haven't even started drinking yet, dude. I probably yeah, shouldn't because I'm all dehydrated and shit. Yeah, probably I'm all It'll dilapidated and whatnot. You know? Right. No, it's just it's more cost less. effective. Yeah. Exactly. It's the best well, I don't know. If, I don't know if I'm going to drink less, but in theory, that's yeah. <laughs> Although I did just chug this full of some ice watts, dude. I lo- If there's one thing that is just the most refreshing, it's a nice, frosty, full cup of ice watts, dude. Even in the wintertime, dude. It's I just that. I, I can't do cold water, bro. What? Nope. How do you not drink cold I water? Drink cold water. You just be bro. drinking warm watts. Yeah, room temp watts, dude. Room temp watts. They say temp it actually hydrates you quicker that way. 
uh, because when it you do drink better. cold water, it like it sends your body into like a micro like sense of shock or something to that effect, from my understanding. And uh, so it actually doesn't absorb into your body, your bloodstream, whatever. Um, your body doesn't process it as quickly as room temp watt. Yeah. But like room temp watt is like so to help with your uh, digestive plain... system too, your metabolism. Boosts it's just so burn. plain white vanilla, dude. Nah, dude, it tastes better. Water, no, it does not. It tastes, water doesn't taste like water fuck. Tastes, water tastes like water fish does. gum. Ice no. water does not. Ice water because no. the cold and the ice actually tricks your fucking taste buds into not tasting the water for what it is. You don't taste the minerals in the water. You don't taste any of that. Nah, Whereas dude. room temp watt, you can tell the difference. Nah, room temp watt is boring and gross, dude. Nah, dude. Throw some cubes on that bitch, dude. Up. Adubs does not have a clue room what the fuck water is master up, dude. Race, dude. Nah, dude, I don't believe it. I'm going to build a foxhole in my front yard. It might come in handy, dude. <clears throat> I have shot out I have shot out of them a little bit, but they're four to five. Yeah, that's all you need, dude. Mother Nature wants you to trench tunnel warfare it up, dude. That's what I'm saying, dude. I'm going to have to strongly disagree with A-Dubs, dude. He usually has some good comments to make, but this is just a terrible take. Like, share, comment, subscribe, dude. Ice cold watts supremacy nah, for sure. Room water is water. Watts. You cannot change that fact, dude. That water is, is fish cum, dude. Too cold hurts my teeth. That's such an old person so to say. Just thing to say. Fish cum cold. Yeah, dude. It's easier to digest that way. I feel like it's easier to ingest. I should say, it goes down easier. Giggity. I guess. I don't know. Uh, oof. Jeebs. Jeebs. Louise. Murky and annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I assume you meant women, but he likes his no, water like he water. likes his water. Yeah. <clears throat> Weird, but save old tires. They could be used as defensive shooting barrier, maybe with sandbags. Indeed. Yep. Indeed, indeed. You could also fucking throw them at them to the range, dude. You could, yep. dude, you get the fucking, that's what you should have done. Go. I'm sure there's a fucking junkyard somewhere. Get a bunch of old ties, fucking fill them up with some fucking dirt and sand and shit, and fuck, you'd be fine, dude. Fine, dude. There's a lot of ranges. A lot of ranges fucking grind them up. They have like those little rubber pellets and shit yeah. that they have. I've never been to one, but I've seen them on like YouTube and shit. And that's a pretty decent concept. But like, how do you gather all the lead and shit out of it? You got to fucking dig through that shit the whole time because that's crazy. I just leave it there. <sighs> nah, dude. It's fucking bad for your health, bro. Uh, so I'm they say, dude, that might. Dirt. Well, it's not dirt. It's like rubber and shit. It's just well, all in the range. It, so practice, not train. Health? What's the difference between practice and training? Training is what happens when you get instructed, I think. And then practice is after you go home to work on what you've been trained with. I don't know. I really, I use them interchangeably. Train, practice, plinket at pop can. Same, same, dude. Train like you fight. Definitely room temperature water is the best. Tempted adverse, dude. Get out of here, dude. You, All these room temp water drinking ass weirdos, dude. It's I mean, ex-wives could also technically be used as sandbags, but <laughs> that's funny. There's no way of going. There's no way of going budget on nods, right? Well, it depends on what your idea of budget is. Um, if your budget is less than $1,000, I think that the NVG-10, NVG-30, or a Psionics Aurora is an excellent option for that price point, like across the board. Is it as good as a regular PVS-14? No, but in some ways it's better because you can't burn your tubes and you fucking, you could literally plug it into an anchor battery and run it and fucking have a solar panel bolted to it. And you could update the hardware and the software and the fucking, you know, it's a little bit more modular in that sense, but... Um, if you're looking for an actual analog tube, um, you could build your own, which you can subscribe to S2 Underground, and he's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to that type of shit. And uh, you can get a parts kit for a PVS-14, fully kitted, everything you need to build it out for like twelve to fifteen hundred bucks. And uh, at that point, what sketched me out about it is like that's still a decent amount of money. And when I eventually fuck it up then it's worth nothing. But if you're good with that kind of shit, which it doesn't seem too, too difficult to assemble one, uh, build one out. And I'm sure I would be capable, but it just, it worries me because I'm not good with these fangled electronical computing devices and shit. The only part of it um, I've, I've ever questioned with it is the uh, purging yeah. process with it. Yeah. 
and it'd be my luck. I'd fucking touch something magnetized to something it wasn't supposed to, not even realize that like that's just the shit that happens to me. So I just bought mine and I got mine for now again, I work at a gun shop, so I get everything at a discount, which is definitely nice. Uh, perks of the job comes in handy. Uh, I paid 2100 before taxes out the door. It was like 23 something. And then uh, to normal people, it would have sold for like anywhere from like 25, 26, 27, um, depending on the exact model. Mine is a Gen 2 Plus AGM green foss and it's a grade one so uh it's the cleanest tube there is zero imperfections it's beautiful scales look through it the fucking shits there you don't need gen 3 who dude you don't need fucking shit it's fine it's perfectly fine and to most people a pvs 14 even if it is a fucking auto gated white foss fucking you know gen 3 that's still a budget tube to them so you know and those are like five thousand dollars depending on which one you get but if you can get a used one you know, and the people are trustworthy or, or whatever, but yeah, there, there are ways to do it, but just understand your detractors to that situation. You know, if you are going digital as opposed to analog, or if you are going with like a grade three tube, that's going to have some blems in it. And, you know, it's not auto gated. My shit's not auto gated. I don't think it's something you need. It's nice to have though. Um, you know, different shit, but yeah, um, it's definitely doable in a lot of ways, but, uh, it depends what you're looking for and what you're trying to do with it. Uh, but yeah, there will be a bunch more content on all that stuff in the future, working on the, uh, NVG 30 review. And that thing's pretty sick because it's about the same price as a Psyonix Aurora, <coughs> a couple bucks cheaper, depending on which model you get. Um, and, uh, that thing is actually really, really fucking sick, dude. It's, it's pretty impressive. You know, the digital stuff is coming a long way. Uh, and that is the future in the future. Night vision will be digital instead of analog. But right now, as far as the, you know, the latencies and the, you know, the battery life and, and everything else, like it's not, it's not there yet. Well, I'm sure the stuff the government has is, but the stuff on the civilian market is not there yet to compete truly with analog night vision of today. But again, I'd rather have 10 dudes with a fucking Cyanex Aurora or an NVG 10, NVG 30 than one or two dudes with a PVS 14 because we could still all fucking move in the woods at night. We could still all see IR lights, IR lasers and fucking shoot under the nods and fucking not give away our positions with white lights and whatever it may be. So, um, you know, India, not the arrow, you know, you can make lesser gear work just as good for you if you know how to run it. So, but yeah. Just works. What am I missing here? Keeps things spicy. I enjoy a little danger. Definitely going to look up NVG 10s. Thank you, bro. I also think the caches are good to have buried with certain items. I'm sure the feds are listening to these comments. No, fuck them, dude. Fuck them with an AIDS dick. Um, I will say this. The NVG 10 is great, and it's significantly less money. And if you do want to look into that, use my link because you get or use my coupon code because you get um, 10% off. It's uh, the good night gear one. Um, it should be posted below in any one of my videos, but, uh, that saves you at least 50 bucks, you know, on most of these things. And, um, it's pretty sick, but for a little bit more money, the NVG 30 is, uh, definitely a better option as far as the clarity and the latency, which there's not really a lot of latency with the NVG 10. It's just like, if you're really quickly moving your head, but then it stabilizes, it's definitely better on the, on the 30 and they do have different color options. The white Foss actually looks really, really fucking clean on it. Um, and the illuminator I think is a little bit better, but yeah. Um, Make sure you save some money if you do end up buying it. But yeah, they I have found that they're a very decent option for the money for sure. One mil equals ton centimeters and hundred miles is the easiest sighting method in my opinion. Bro, by the way, drop that micro center discount code in the chat, dude. You're trying to get a printer, dude. I wish I had a fucking micro center fucking discount code, dude. I'd be out here Same fucking dude. buying printers and fucking filament left, right, and center, dude. Another gaming compute, maybe. TT's case officer is active in the chat sick they always are dude they really always are but i mean one mil is ten. dude i'm burping up that fucking i had panda express i, I got panda express on the way home nice. because i didn't feel like cooking nothing and i hadn't had it in a long time and i was craving some beijing beef and coconut and honey walnut shrimp or whatever the yeah. fuck it is fire absolutely fire dude I, but i just burped it up tasted it still tastes good still tastes good dude it's up to you to disclose, man. What are you guys doing, dude? 
having their own fucking conversation, dude. But yeah. <clears throat> so what do you speaking of printers, dude? What do you what? What are you doing Continue. with your fucking trying what are you trying to do with your thing? Now. I thought it was running. It's running, but not properly. Why what's wrong with it? <laughs> what? Like it's the first bird's nest in the no, history of three D printers. No, this is like the tenth in the past twenty four hours. Well, why don't you fucking learn how to print, dude? I'm just having better Get good, issues bro. and all the shit that I did before. I've changed to nothing, and it's just not wanting to work. It's probably because so. it's not level, dude. You should put it down a con- no, concrete slab or something. It's level. You're it's using the level. purple Elmer's glue sticks, dude? Yeah. That works for me every time. Did you try the hairspray? No, I did not try any hairspray, but I've never needed to. The glue sticks always work, and I don't mm-hmm. know what the fuck. But, uh, yeah. The, the only, only thing... thing I can think is that this is old filament at this point, and uh, I have it in a dryer. I actually had to replace it, got a new filament dryer, because the old one, which is right here, broke during the move. And so I got that one brand new yesterday, and uh, I had it running the past fucking tw- over 24 hours now with this filament in it, and... It says it's at 15% relative humidity within that, which is well below where it needs to be to print functionally, but I just, I don't know. It's interesting. I just got to try and uh, get some new filament and see if that helps me any. So, this filament, though, that you're having this this issue with, Mm -hmm. was it brand new in the packaging? Was it open... I don't have any sealed filament at the moment. Why is that? Because every roll of filament that I've had, I have used and utilized for different purposes. Different purpose, uh, you say? Yeah. I've got a fuck ton of still sealed fil- sealed filament. Um, but I don't know how well that actually works. Well, I mean, it should it... all be vacuum sealed, so as long as it's held the vacuum, it should right. be an issue. You know, it's not opened at all. And it's just... But I don't understand. So what is the problem with it's you want moisture in it or you don't no, want moisture? You don't in want it. moisture. In okay. Because that does what? That will cause it to become more brittle. It will cause it to heat differently. It'll see. I would think situ- I would think that mess. you would want a little bit of moisture in there to make it more like yeah, malleable. It's, it's, yeah, it's weird because you would it's think if it was dried it out like a log or whatever, it'd be a lot easier to snap or chip or break. So odd, odd indeed. What exactly is like the chemical composition of 3d printed filament? Like what even, what kind of, it's a thermoplastic fucking whatever, but like, what is it similar to? Depends on what material you're using. Like PLA, it's a polymer. Right. But well, yeah, but there, I mean, there's, there's a million different fucking, they got some weird shit. They got some biodegradable fucking yeah. shit. They got carbon fiber infused shit. They got shit that's infused with real like wood chips or something. Yeah, they got nylons. You yeah. have all kinds of shit, man. Benjamin Knighton says, how did the nutrient survival food go? Freeze dried food and MREs are expensive, but they're definitely worth putting money into. I definitely agree. Uh, however, the old five gallon bucket with a Mylar bag filled to the top with rice or beans or different shit like that. Um, is a way cheaper option and definitely still an excellent option. Now, nobody, unless you're Brazilian, I guess, wants to eat rice and beans for the rest of their lives. But uh, it's a, it's a, it stores really well. It's very affordable, both in the containers that you're going to have to buy to store it long term. Um, but you get a lot that a fucking five gallon bucket of rice goes a long way. Um, but yeah, the nutrient survival stuff, the it's actually pretty solid. Um, the video should be coming out shortly. Uh, I say that, but it'd probably be a week or two because I, every day that goes by, I'm trying a different little thing. Like I brought some of their bars to work, those different bars. Um, I cooked up some of their, the, the meals, the lasagna one and the eggs and bacon one and all that different shit. Uh, I still got the apple fritter thing left. I drank the drink mixes except for the coffee. I still got to make the coffee, um, which I'll probably do that tomorrow. 
Uh, and then, because I'm going to be off and making YouTube's most mediocre, best YouTube gun channel content ever. So, guys, make sure you're subscribed to watch all of that. But, um, yeah, I only have a couple little things left. But, I, honestly, it does taste pretty good. Now, again, I still haven't got on the website and looked yet as to what all this shit would cost. So, you know, is it? for the money better than mountain house or better than wise food company or better than valley food storage or better than patriot supply co or better than i think they're all probably roughly the same but the the premise of the nutrient survival thing is they're packing it with more nutrients to add to the performance it's not just calories to keep you going it's calories plus things to help you excel in what you're doing, whether it be some type of athletic performance, uh, survival situation, or just cognitive function, which has to do with all those other things as well, because you have to be thinking before you're shooting. You have to be thinking before you're moving. You have to be thinking, you know, you're fucking sitting there chopping firewood. You got to make sure you're alert. You're not going to chop your leg off in the middle of the boog and then fucking have to put a tourniquet on and then you die or whatever the fuck. So I like it. It It's good so far. Again, it's a little sampley pack that they they sent me so i don't you know i'd want to at least eat you know the shit on a regular basis for a little while um before i could say for sure but i definitely it does not taste bad i'll tell you that <clears throat> some of the bars like the fig bars they taste it tastes like healthy food like you know you're eating healthy food but um it wasn't Nobody like gross it. it wasn't <laughs> yeah, right. it wasn't gross or nothing but like it's just ah this is not loaded down with sugar and diabetes I'm Wilford Brimley. I'm here to talk to you about the diabetes. Shot a fly at 50 meters with that scope to 24 inch stag bull barrel upper with a PRS stock, dude. Shooting flies, dude. Yeah, well, I shot the dick off of that at 100, dude, with a 1911 with my eyes closed. Behind the back, dude. Freaking Annie Folkley's over here. Uh, oh, my goodness. Where's the burp guy at when you need him? That was a weak one, though. I would have let him down. <laughs> So what's up, dude? How's the little baby Shar Shars? How's fucking the fam, dude? You guys got anything planned other than the fucking squad, dude? Any interesting yeah, stuff? You guys go? Do you guys go to fucking Disney every weekend? How does that work? I mean, I don't. They tend well, to. I would assume you wouldn't, dude. I would assume they tend that. To, yeah. Like, I just how you don't get sick of it, yesterday. dude. I, For what? Apparently they don't. Well, there was a concert or some shit they were having there, so. I went for that. Anybody good play? Nobody that I give a shit about. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it is Disney, so. <clears throat> the old Illuminati, yeah. if you will. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, it's not. I assume they. So how does that work, though? Because, like, I assume they get in for free or whatever because everybody works there or whatever, right? No. So. They have annual passes for everybody, right? Okay. So the thing is, you can you get in for free as an employee there, right? Okay. So that's you can't bring your fam. That's both. That's only for yourself, and then you have like a limited amount of comp tickets. It's like where you can bring somebody in with you. Yeah. Okay. Guest passes, shit like that. But with that employee wow. pass to get in, you also have blackout dates. Such as all the peak times, you know, spring breaks, a lot of the summer, you can't get in with that pass. And so they avoided that by instead getting annual passes for everybody. And so they just get in whenever the fuck they want, wherever the right. fuck they want. You still got to pay fucking $20 for a bag of popcorn, though. No, you don't yeah. get a discount yeah. on that fucking yeah, shit. No. Well, you do Is get that... a discount, but not that much of a discount. It's like 20% off. Yeah. Better than enough, dude. Yeah. Fucking eat a thirty dollar hot dog comes with yep. two fries and shit. But it does bring a lot of the like dinners and the meals there and everything down to a more reasonable place. Yeah, if you're yeah. going to like the actual like decent restaurants, but if you're just yeah. getting like street food while you're walking around the park, dude, it's a fucking twelve dollar dollar churro, bro. It's okay. a good churro, but well, I'm just I'm exaggerating, yeah. but yeah. you got to yeah. sneak in your own snacks. I mean, you don't have to sneak them in. You can just bring them in. Oh, well, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know how that. They... Yeah, we've been more frugal on some of our trips when we would uh, vacation here and done that. Pack sandwiches for lunch and shit like that. Yeah, uh, fuck it. Pack sandwiches for lunch, then we eat dinner there at a restaurant yeah. and get a good dinner. 
you know? Yeah, they and they do have. I will say they do have some decent restaurants in the fucking. Yeah, that's yeah. where I met fucking Steven Tyler, dude. Is at the Rock yeah. and Roller Coaster at the premiere yeah. of it. It was some like African themed fucking style restaurant with food or whatever, and he was just like there. Yeah, and he looked like somebody's grandma. Um, Ben yeah. says I've talked to people recently trying to pick their brains per se. What about what's going on as far as being prepared and people are still fucking brain dead. Yeah, dude, it's yeah. crazy to me that it's this bad. It's thi- right, dude. It's this bad already that like the, how do you, how do you even with the bullshit that they're not giving you the full story or even the right story to begin with mm-hmm. that's on the news. How does that not kick your ass into gear and be like, hey, you know what? The world is crazy. There's some bad stuff taking place all over. And you know what? There's bad stuff taking place right here and now. And you know what? Maybe I should take upon myself a wee bit of responsibility for myself and the people that I supposedly care about. And no, dude, that's such an absurd, abstract concept to people. They have it too easy, dude. And they're the people that have it too easy are going to have it really, really rough when the time comes. And that fucking time is here, motherfuckers. Believe you me. I bought 20 Shein TQs. Dude, he's all set. <laughs> Has anyone tested the AAC 5.7 ammo yet? Is it neutered like all the Fioki loaded spear FN range dynamic offerings? Um, I have not shot. That's PSA's fucking ammo brand. And yeah. I try not to support those fucks. Um, see that they're apparently finally coming out with the 762. 762 what? About 39. Oh, the ammo. No, I did yeah. not. What's the pricing on that look like? Uh, let me check. I checked it the other day. 15 bucks a box. It's like Steel case. 45 cents for per round for regular, then like 50 cents for hot, the black tips. Black tips? What the fuck is yep. a... What, what do you mean black tips? Like Steel Core 762. And how many? What? How are they selling it? By the case, by the box, boxes. and for how many dollars? Uh, fifty cents per round for the black tips, forty-five cents for the <sighs> regulars. I'm trying to find the actual ammo now on their site. Why couldn't you just say ten dollars a box? Because it's fucking. That's what I remembered. Okay, and I didn't feel like doing that. Don't hurt yourself. I'm trying not to. We don't have insurance here in this company. <laughs> oh, okay. It's refreshing, dude. The old vodka and Mountain Dew combination, dude. So we got Ozzy in the house, dude. Bark at the moon. What's up, dude? What is up? We got Gizzard Gary, dude. Hey, y'all. What's up, man? What is up, dude? The old gizzard. Freaking turkeys out here, dude. Um, Mr. says pistol PDWs with cans for shit hit the fan. Uh, definitely a viable option. I think you've been watching too many brass facts videos, though. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, the fucking uh, that TP9 is fucking sick. I want one of those so bad. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely viable. It's more viable than just a handgun, right? Because you've got four points of contact. Uh, depending on the PDW setup, it perhaps may get better velocity with a longer barrel. You get better powder burn, better terminal ballistics, potentially better accuracy potential out to distance. Um, you know, it's obviously being a pistol caliber with a suppressor. It's going to be far more quiet than a 5.56 five, with a suppressor. Um, they're typically a lot smaller than an inter- intermediate cartridge rifle, like an AR or an AK or whatever. Um, especially if you're going like the route of a flux or a TP nine or like SP five K or a little CZ Scorpion micro or whatever, they're going to be lighter. You're lugging the shit around. It's going to take the same ammo as your handgun, um, which I would still always run a handgun, you know, because you might not be able to conceal your CZ Scorpion when you go into town to fucking grab supplies, but uh, you can have your pistol with you. And so, you know, having that ammo, you only have to have one type of ammo, logistically speaking, that's that's decent. Um, But you are definitely missing out at distance and you're definitely missing out with lethality 
in a lot of cases because if the shit is really popping off, dude, it's not just the good guys that have kit and armor and helmets and fucking this and the third. Like Antifa's got them, BLM's got them, obviously the government's got them. Um, so it depends on your situation and exactly how you're planning. You know, if you're just ratting it out, you're on some stank rack shit, you know, corner camping, it, it's fine perfectly fine but if you think you're gonna have to fucking do some giga chat shit you might want an actual long gun um but again everything's logistics if you if that's all you have access to if that's all you can carry if you're running a real minimalist setup um india not the arrow across the board with anything but there's definitely you know advantages to both you know there there's pros and cons to both it really depends on where you're at and again too like if you're in a city urban environment probably not as bad as if you were out in like a f- cornfield in in bufu bumfuck nowhere you know where like most of your engagements will be several hundred yards you know then you definitely want a rifle you know so situation dictates the tactics but i'm not opposed to it nor am i for it as it were but if it works it works and so it definitely could work on the uh, psa 762s so the black tip is apparently Designed for maximum expansion and weight retention upon impact. So it's like a a varmint projectile. It's like the ballistic tip Hornady shit. Yeah. So, and that's how much a box? uh, 10 bucks a box. For the black tip? For the black tip, yeah. So, and that's the same price as the regular shit, or it's more? The regular shit is less. So the regular shit is forty five cents a round. So okay. so bucks nine, nine bucks, bucks a box. Yeah, yeah. dollar difference. Um, that's not awful. I think the cheapest five or not five four five, but seven six two. But do they have five four five? Um, I'm not. I don't believe so. The cheapest seven six two by thirty nine we got <coughs> at the shop currently, which given we're a small, tiny little mom pop shop compared to the huge fucking. Yeah too big for their britches ass PSA establishment that they got going on, especially if they are making their own shit and have access to all that. Obviously you're cutting out middlemen and all that, but I think the cheapest shit we have is like 1150 or 1199. So it's not terrible, but it is real AK ammo. Like it's I'm almost positive. It's Russian ammo that just gets imported to another country. That's cool to import to us yeah. and just repackaged. So, and you know, that's, Tula, fucking brown bear, silver bear, fucking wolf, whatever. Like that's what those guns were made to shoot. It's shit ammo, but that they love it. They they run it. You know, I've had more problems with brass case ammo in seven six two by thirty nine guns than I ever have steel case. Um, but yeah, you know, and that that's with well, AKs, of course. But well, PSA shit is steel case. Yeah, yeah, that's what they were talking about because that's how they were going to keep the price down so low. Because yeah, Hornady's Hornady makes fucking steel case match grade 762 by 39 which i didn't know that that was a thing <clears throat> but yeah supposedly i don't know that there's any match grade ak's out there i mean unless you're in the custom market and shit like sure, that but somewhere yeah but gizzard gary is the name of someone who absolutely fucks dude <laughs> hell yeah dude we got logan in the house what's up what's up pcc wouldn't be my first choice but to each their own go with what you have in the moment and what works dude indeed I like a cheek weld CP33 with can. Guess I meant more rollish, dude. The fucking, the, the without rule of law, he's saying. Um, the CP33 with a can, dude. <clears throat> 34 shots of 22 long rifle with a can, dude. Now, it's a Keltec product, and it's super cool, really fun to shoot, really nice trigger, high capacity. I just don't know if I could ever trust my life to a gun like that because those quad stack mags, if you don't load them absolutely perfectly, you're almost guaranteed to get rim locked with the rim fire ammunition that 22 LR is. Uh, on top of that, it's a Keltec, which million dollar moves, 10 cent finish. You know, they make super cool designs, but they should have someone else build them for them half the time. And then on top of that it's just little deuce deuce in the bubble goose so now you know you may not get through a heavy fucking leather jacket at 75 yards so um which i you know i'm being facetious but still the i would at least want nine millimeter bare minimum for a sub gun type of thing and really i would be more prone if i was going to a sub gun over um you know a five five six or something i would go five seven 
and I would have either a PS90 or a little CMMG, whatever, or something like that, because you still have armor piercing potential. Um, and then you have flatter shooting projectiles that you could engage at a little bit of distance, uh, even if it's just to keep their head down, because obviously they're super lightweight projectiles. Um, I still wouldn't stand in front of it, but um, yeah, it's not going to hit with the same authority as like a, a 556 or a 762 by 39 at that distance. And uh, the ammo, though, is extremely lightweight, and usually the guns are all pretty high capacity. So you could carry a lot of ammo, a lot of mags, you know, carry the 5.7 pistol. You know, I'd still probably have a 9 millimeter pistol just for practicality and logistics, because if I did have to resupply, I'm going to find 9 way before I find 5.7. But, uh, yeah, that would be cool. I would take, like, a little P90 or, you know, whatever. But... Went to a gun show in, in Batesville, Mississippi. Bought some Wolf 762 hollow points. That shit is definitely drying up, dude. Yeah. I usually stay away from the hollow points. I found that they don't like to feed in the short guns for some reason. Like a Draco will not typically run the Russian hollow point ammo for whatever reason. I don't know why, but I remember getting those boxes of Russian sardine cans. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. I still go solely with my own reloaded defensive rounds, usually spear high hollow point projectiles dude yeah dude you can't go wrong with spear spear makes excellent shit dude 30 super carry was made to be sub gunned it dude that see that would be sick dude but no nobody's behind it man nobody's stepping up to the plate dude until glock makes a fucking 30 shot 30 super carry glock 19 you know nobody's gonna get they're not gonna buy into the hype dude but that would be a sick that fucking sick. that would be a sick <laughs> sub gun load Mark Serbu just dropped a video like last week or a week ago, or two yeah. weeks ago about that shit. And I watched it and he was saying the same thing. We got Wind Model 88 guns and outdoors in the house. What is up, dude? So, what is up, brother man? <clears throat> but yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. I wonder what the ballistics you would get out of that. Because it's like a 50,000 PSI cartridge out of a handgun. Um, which the pressures would still be the same. If not, perhaps even lower, maybe. Or I don't know exactly how that works. They would be the same, but, um, but yeah, you would definitely get better velocity, better powder burn. Um, although that's that's got to be a super quick burning powder. So I don't know to what extent the barrel length uh, may start affecting negatively the round by creating drag yeah. or whatever. Like I don't think that it would be good to have in a 16 inch rifle. But like yeah. maybe an eight inch PDW type thing or a 10 inch fucking you dig from fucking CMMG or something. But yeah, that would be super cool. I think that would definitely reinvent the fucking interest in that round. I think it's a cool round. I think it's a viable round. You know, 32 has been around for a long time in a, a myriad, a plethora of different varieties. And uh, 32s are typically known to be very accurate. And, uh, you know, lightweight, small ammo, and and you could push it pretty quick because it's a lightweight projectile. So, um, yeah, that would be sick, dude. That would definitely be sick. Sherman Sales says, does hollow point bullets filled with non-kosher bacon grease offend both Jews and Muslims? Asking for a friend, dude. I think you might be onto something, dude. This We should patent this type of technology because here shortly we might need it. You know, that's good, dude. Love it. Absolutely love it. What do you think of Fort Scott munitions, dude? So I will say this. I appreciate the premise behind the product. Spitzer style bullet hits, tumbles, <coughs> drastic casualty, fucking terminal ballistic things. Um, seems very high quality as far as the manufacturing, the presentation, the box that it comes in. Um, and uh, they seem pretty well made. As far as like the projectiles and the casings, like everything's clean, everything, the fit and finish is real good. I haven't shot any myself, but, uh, you know, I've seen some videos and stuff on it and, uh, it, I think it's a little expensive probably for what you get, but I don't know, maybe it's worth it, but yeah, it, it seems to be decent, but yeah, I've never shot any myself, but it, it does look cool. I, they do like different little limited addiction, limited addiction, limited edition fucking metal box. Addictions. You do. You don't want to be too overly addicted. Um, but whatever. Some people out there are addicted to dick, dude. Imagine that gay, you know, fucking. True. But yeah, I think, I think they're cool. I think it's cool. I, uh, you know, I like the, like the Navex shit. Go check out SwitchPod's video on the Navex ammo, dude. That shit is very impressive. Um, 
Of course, I like my Underwood Extreme Penetrators, which is what they called me in high school, uh, except it was the Underwear Extreme Penetrator. But the uh, the fucking, like, the screwdriver tip shit or just any of their hard cast or any of their ball loads, like Plus P Plus, or you're talking 45 Supers or whatever, like old Corbon Power Balls, like any of the DPX, dude, fucking... Uh, the, uh, what is it, dude? The fucking PD, TAC PD, fucking PDX, fucking something or other. Solid copper shit. Um, Barnes, I think it is. The TAC PD, PX, I don't fucking know. But there, there's a bunch of good ammo out there. But yeah, the fucking Fort Scott shit, I, I would like to check out some of their stuff, for sure. Yeah, the tumble on impact, for sure. Radial delay blowback, 6.8, 30 super carry. <laughs> With quad stack mags, dude. That, see... Now you're talking because you could have a quad stack mag and it would still be only like slightly thicker than like probably a 762 by 39 mag. And uh, a lot of amps, dude. No recoil. It would probably suppress halfway decently. Yeah. Just imagine how many runs you get in a quad stacked mag with like the length of an AR mag, a 30 rounder. Yeah, you'd probably get like 100 of them in there. <laughs> <clears throat> no, you'd probably get fucking 60 or something, 65. Yeah. But that'd That's be sick. sick, dude. That'd be absolutely sick, dude. I don't know. Somebody better be out there working and not Caltech, dude. Leave it alone. You know it's Caltech. Fucking <laughs> leave it you alone. It's, it's, only it's gonna be Caltech. Caltech. It's gonna be Caltech, and then it's gonna be Smith and Wesson with another polymer fucking bullshit M and P A R. And it's gonna have it's not even gonna have it's gonna have like 20 round mags, and that'll be it. And then, uh, fucking fuds. Then Q will come out with one. <laughs> I'm surprised Q hasn't already You'll come out. With see them. them again. Yeah. And <laughs> it'll be eight thousand dollars. Exactly. About to drive home. I will get out my PC after I shower. Will the stream still be on for a while? That's the plan, but you never know. You de- you never do know so these far. days. Depends on how long yeah. the shower you're taking, you know. Right. He's gonna have to do a power shower for the yeah. power hour. And get back, dude. I'm doing okay, man. Got a little gun story to tell y'all in the Insta chat then. For sure. For sure. Sig P322 or TX22? I know the TX22 is solid. I'm going to say TX22 all day long. Scales, feel free to chime in on that one. I agree. TX22 all day. <laughs> give give it a little bit more than that. My experience, I have I one. I've shot it. Yeah. I never I mean, fucking clean it. It works I, great. I, I, I don't have one. Though. Well, Cheyenne the Cheyenne has. has. You know what I mean. Shut up. <laughs> I've shot it. Fairly extensively. It's a big I word, don't. Dude. I don't think I have ever cleaned it because I can't take the barrel out of it because I fucking got the uh, the thread adapter on there with the thread protector because I think it looks cool. Yeah, and I haven't taken it off yet, and so it just it sits as is. The only problems I ever had with it were one hundred percent ammunition related, but uh, yeah. yeah works it's yeah, accurate cool. enough for what it is it's got great got triggers amazing trigger ergonomics good ergonomics fine, yep. full yep. size gun it's fucking and they got the new compact dude yeah. which is yeah. a 13 plus one and it's about the size of like a vp9 sk so it's a that little bit bigger a, than a 26 is a 16 round mag in the, in the regular one yeah so like and then i added uh some 3d printed extensions so now minor 20 yep yep it's great and the, the nice thing about the 22 shit is like 3D printed shit will last forever. Yeah. You know, it's not getting a lot of recoil abuse and all that. And um, you could probably just 3D print the whole mags, dude. They're all just polymer as long as you had the springs. And I'm pretty sure they're using like fucking pen springs and shit inside that fucking thing. But uh, but the the TX22 Compact, I'm probably going to pick one of those up for myself. Yeah. Um, even though I probably should just get a Glock 44 like a normal person because it would be an exact replica trainer of all the guns I use most of the time defensively. But the TX-22 is way cooler. It feels better in the hand. It's got a way better trigger. The new compacts are coming dot cut. So you can put a little dotty poo on there. I'm pretty sure it's got a little rail for a compact light. Can you get the TX-22 anymore? So we can get the TX-22 in 10 round mag non-threaded barrel configuration which is why the compact makes more sense because they all come optics cut from the factory and you can get 13 rounders for it and it's smaller so i mean i guess if you did want to throw it in a pack or something like that um 
and you still get a decent grip on it. And again, it's just a 22, so it really doesn't yeah. fucking matter. No. And it's got nice, cool slide cuts in it and shit. Like yeah. it's it's a legit, and it's not crazy money. I think we're selling them for 319, 309, something like that, 329, something to that effect. And uh, all day long, I'd go TX22 for yeah. sure. I think that's honestly the best. 22 semi-automatic handgun for that style of 22 semi-automatic handgun on the market. I, th- I would take it over the Glock 44, the Smith Wesson MP 22 C, um, the fucking Ruger LCP 22, the fucking any of that shit. I'd take it over a Smith Wesson victory. I'd take it over the fucking plus the competition ones. Super cool. Threaded yeah. slide or frame mounted dots or slide mounted dots that are not like attached to the slide reciprocation so it just sits there a lot of dudes are shooting those and like steel challenge and different stuff yeah. like that um and they just run man they're very very reliable it might be one of the most reliable 22 semi-automatic handguns uh that exists man from my experience i mean we just, i shot the shit out of that thing back when yeah. you guys first got it we we're just shooting it dude <laughs> we were shooting it like fucking <laughs> just shooting it dude i just can't wait to fucking play with that tcr 22 again yeah can't wait to get the fucking range built yeah, That's dude. so many fucking plastic Easter eggs ready to get shot by 22s. Hell yeah. You better be turning a camera on, dude, when you're doing <laughs> I this. I got hundreds of them, dude. <laughs> <laughs> now, so now you're going to fucking litter, dude. There's going to be plastic it's particles in all yard, in the bro. earth, dude. It's yeah, also going to be a shit ton of lead. The fuck, dude? <laughs> Which is worse. <laughs> I guess, you dude, know. but you don't have it. At least clean up the plastic, dude. Nah, dude, fuck it. Yeah, fuck Just that plastic. Dude. Dirt. It's fine. Stupid ass, <laughs> ugly ass plastic, dude. Right, dude, just embedded into the earth for fucking exactly. many, many more moons. Exactly. That's you all know. they do when you recycle this shit anyways. I know, but it's, it's to see that, that, something that's been fucking, like, literally, the fuck, do you not fucking see them? You, you spend all this time, you pay this money to separate your fucking trash yeah. and your recycling, and you don't see the dude come around and throw it in the same fucking bin? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's why, fucking. That's why we never separated it. It's all a facade, do, dude. They put both of them into the same fucking. It's truck all a facade, dude. Now here they hide it a little better because <sighs> they pick up the recycling and the trash on separate days, so you mm. don't see them. You know, right? You Just know more adding to the, the illusion, spot. dude. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. That's got to be a fucking. I gotta understand being like a garbage, tr- like truck driver, dude. Yeah. And they actually make really good money. They do. But like to be the they dude hella benefits. Yeah, to be the dude that fucking has to sift through that shit though once it gets there, <laughs> that's gotta suck. And I really do wonder, like, on average, like how much crazy shit that they find. Or like dead that's... bodies or fucking huge knows, fucking yeah. snakes that somebody just threw in the garbage. Yeah, you know, yeah. that would f- I'd quit. I would quit. <laughs> I would fucking quit, dude. Fuck that. I'm sick of these motherfucking oh, snakes in this motherfucking garbage, dude. <laughs> like the fucking hell no, dude. Oh, dude. I fucking almost shat myself. I opened the lid to fucking throw some garbage away before I went home one night, and there's literally a fucking like huge snake in there. It was dead, oh, but man. fucking it looked like fucking. The thing from fucking, I felt like Mowgli, dude, in the fucking jungle, dude. It's fucking, that's how big the fucking thing was. Oh, man. R.I.P., though. Yeah. <sighs> Did you name that snack, dude? No. How do you not name your animals, dude? Well, I just, it never was doing well, and I knew that, so I didn't mm. name it. Interesting. Got the KP Heathen in the house, dude. Got the Appalachian Man or the Turkish M4 12-gauge shotgun clones trash. Yes. Do not waste your money. They're like five, six hundred bucks from some of the review. This is the thing about those or any Turkish shotgun is they're all basically coming out of the same factories and then rebranded for different importers, different brands that are stamping their name on it. Some things are slightly changed over the other ones to differentiate them and make it like, hey, this is our gun, which is different than their gun, even though it's the same fucking gun. Um they cost what they cost for a reason. Now, if you just want to buy one as a range toy to fuck around with, and you are never once ever going to grab that in time of need, uh, then whatever, go spend five, 600 bucks on one. But if you are thinking about ever once using it as a serious defensive firearm, just go get a Mossberg Maverick 88 for 200 bucks and pump, pump it up. But uh, yeah, the fucking, 
how about all the companies that are pulling to Springfield and they're, you know, just slightly modifying the guns here and right. fucking polishing everything up and then yeah. selling it for fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, it's mostly just Springfield that I'm aware of. You know, I mean, no, there's a lot of people like, that there's have... uh, fucking ones that uh, I think Grantham and his fucking one guy Micah or whatever got from this one company. What is it? What kind of gun is it though? It's a Turkish M4 clone that was oh, right, right, brought right. in and then redone by this other company. They did a yeah. bunch of shit to it, and yeah. So that's the thing. Made it the... On par. Yeah. With... Okay. So even. Even if it's on par, which it's never going to be because they're not cryogenically treating barrels. They're not fucking they don't have the proven manufacturing capabilities of a Benelli, you know, or a Beretta or a whatever you like. It's never going to be the same. And if you have to dump that much money into it just to get it close and it's still not going to be the sa- the real deal. You might as well just fucking buy a regular all black Benelli M4 is like eighteen hundred bucks. So if you're spending 15 on some Turcanelli bullshit, just get the real deal. Or go get an M2 Tactical for fucking 12 to 13, and you'd be fine. Or get a Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol or a fucking 1301 Tactical. Now, my heart lies with Benelli for sure, but the Berettas are still nice shotguns. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, I, uh, to me, Raider to me, it's not it's not worth it. 14, and I've, I've seen them have issues. So, for, All right, pull this up. Fucking Turkin. This is Turkish? It's originally Turkish. Gull dang, dude. Gobble gobble, bitches. We got the boonie hat bandito in the house. What's up? What's up, dude? How's the boat and trailer coming along, Scales? It's holy ugly fuck is shit is that, dude. They're doing too much, dollars. dude. Doing way too much, dude. Bro, you got carbon fives, dude. I don't give a fuck about their fucking. That's the ugliest stock I've ever seen, ever thought about putting on the fucking M4. The Cerakote is not awful. The Gold Bolt is a little early 2000s for me. The fucking M Lock foregrip with the fucking. I don't know, dude. What are they doing, man, to my baby? Look at how they massacred our boy, dude. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Oh, <clears throat> like, if that was a Benelli. Like an actual Benelli, and it had a real stock on it, you know, maybe that would be pretty cool. But then it would also be five thousand um, dollars. But yeah, I don't know how people could buy. I mean, Grantham definitely didn't buy this for no. sure. He got sent one. Um, this is everybody else did. But I would that. never fucking buy one of those. And I don't think I would personally buy the six hundred dollar ones either. But again, if it works for you, I'm sure it works for people out there. I have seen some good reviews from people that have put a decent amount of rounds through it, a variety of different loads. You know, they are supposedly 100% parts interchangeable with an actual Benelli M4. So, you know, you could, in theory, build the gun out with Benelli parts. But then again, you're back at a $1,500 Turcanelli. So, you know, it depends. But I would not buy one unless you were just going to use it strictly as a range toy. Or like a hunting gun, I guess. But there's better options for that. But yeah, they're cool though. You know, just Benelli M4s in the Argo system in general. Like it's it's a pretty pretty neat concept. I'd see your 300 blackout video got me thinking, and I need to put one together, dude. Yeah, the fucking I got a couple of them. I got that the stag that uh, I did the video recently, and then of course I got the poverty pone uh, pissed budget blast, dude. And uh, that thing's even more of a budget setup than the fucking the uh, the stag. But yeah, 300 blackouts. Cool, man. I like it. I wish, you know, I did have the option of suppressing it in public or whatever. Um, but yeah, the fucking it's still like 300 blackout with supers in a short gun like that. 30 cal capabilities punching through barriers a lot better than five, five, six, same parts pretty much across the board down to the mags, down to the bolt. The only thing that's really different is the barrel. Um, you know, it's, it's cool, man. I like it. And the ammo realistically speaking is not that much more than five, five, six. It's definitely more, but it's not like $30 a box to where it's like, ah, and especially it's not my go-to gun. It's something that I keep around for home defense. Uh, when I'm feeling frisky, it's something that, you know, I'll bring in the truck with me because it's small, fits in a bag, and I have my carry gun. I've got my EDC bag that also has a spare gun in it, if not two sometimes. And then, uh, you know, the 
the long gun pretty much stays a lot bringing into work with me. But if I wasn't going to work, it would stay, you know, out of sight, out of mind in the truck in case I needed it. I know it's there if I can get to it, um, you know, active shooter at the mall situation or whatever the fuck it is where I want something a little bit more than a 43 X. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's I, I do like it. It's pretty sick. Dude. Do you, you don't have anything in 300, do you scales? No. Is that something you're interested in, especially now being able to fucking put a can on it? I mean, you've always been able to, yeah. but you know what I mean. My whole thing is, is that <clears throat> I still don't know if I'm going to go the route of cans. Well, even without a can, dude, are, are you interested in the 300 Blizzy period? Not so much. Why would if that be? I w- if I were to set up a suppressed f- rifle... 300 blackout and if i'm gonna do that i might as well fucking sbr the bitch too and go all out with it right then it'd be cool but i'd be a great hog gun dude you could go out there and feed the fam but that'd be about it no i could just use an ak yeah well you could use a fucking spear dude the fucking like it's like there's not really for me to do that to build all that out i would still look at it as primarily a range toy because in just about any situation that i would need a 556 would do this job just as good if not better and a better option just due to compatibility with everybody else because it just makes sense well right but the fucking I don't know, man. I like the 30 cal shit that, yeah, if you got a Draco or something, I mean, it's the same thing, but it's going to be a bigger, heavier gun, and it's not going to be as easy, nearly as easy, to bolt a light, a dot, a lamb, or whatever to it. Um, But yeah, being around vehicles, being in vehicles every day of our lives, you know, you quite literally, they're shooting people on the highway in Chicago and shit, so you, you quite literally might get stuck in a fucking traffic jam or something, and then all of a sudden there's a fucking hundred mostly peaceful protesters ripping people out of their vehicles and shit. You know, I like the idea that I can shoot through auto glass or shoot through car doors a little bit better with a heavier projectile that's going to carry its inertia through it yeah. uh, a little bit more consistently than a 55 grain, whatever the hell, you know, so, yeah. and, that, and that again, it's a niche application it's not my go-to if the zombie apocalypse pops off right now i'm grabbing a 556 gun um but you know i obviously got it for a decent enough price they sent me the upper and then i built it out you know whatever but i like having it i I think it is probably a more practical option than a draco for what i'm trying to do with it Um, although in that situation the draco may be way more practical because you get you respect have plenty of spare parts <laughs> right right in Once chirac dude for front. sure yeah no like yeah no just, shit it's i've always wanted duct tape around my grip it's hey if it's what you got it's what you got yeah you gotta do what you gotta do dude yeah just out here in the hood so i did see a dude yesterday on one of the uh facebook groups i'm in selling a uh 50 bale wolf upper so you're gonna buy a 50 Beowulf, uh, but not a 300 Blizz, dude. DCA 50 Beowulf. For how it. much dials used does that go for? 50? 130 bucks. <laughs> See, the, at, you, the, oh, you don't no. even have to tell Cheyenne, dude. Like, <laughs> that's within. It's... That's close enough to the hundred dollar mark, dude, exactly, where the rule still bro. applies. Exactly. Because <clears throat> it's a person to person. There's no tax, but if there was tax, it would be approximately the same. So, it's, so I would jump on that, dude. That's. It's got me, I just that being said, if that mother grabber blows up, dude, <laughs> you're fucked. <laughs> so, oh man, but good time. Have, the problem is, I'd have to tell Shan about the purchase of the ammo. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> How much is what is it? What'd you say, 450 or 458? It's uh, 50 Beowulf. Oh, 50 Beowulf. Yeah, 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 that's crazy. That's a hog round. That's a fucking scalding oh, elephant round. A fucking round, dude. That's a big round, dude. Pull that up. Let's get on some some ammo seek dot coms or something. Forty bucks for twenty. Twenty, yeah. Forty one dollars for Underwood fifty Beowulf. Yeah, but that's under say. like what's ball ammo or do they even fucking make ball I ammo? Don't for know they make <laughs> ball ammo for this shit. Yeah, we got Alexander Arms twenty for forty two ninety nine. Alexander Arms. 48 for 20 yeah the cheapest is that underwood and underwood makes great ammo dude shout out to underwood they're underwood, an illinois company 50 grain full metal jacket 
yeah. two dollars a round. What's the fee per second on that? Uh, let's see. If Midway will give me the information, I can fix. Seventeen hundred and seventy-five feet per second. They couldn't get one more. Yeah, they couldn't. Yeah, fudge the numbers a bit. Yeah, they, yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely fudge the numbs on that one. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> but <laughs> I guess it proves their honesty, if nothing else, because that would have been a hell of a selling point. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, I don't even own one. I would have bought a box. <laughs> but uh. Or the XTP jacketed hollow points, three fifty grand for forty eight dollars. Yeah, not cheap, dude. But again, it's a it's a niche round. It's most dudes are using it for hunting. You know, it's yeah. not. There's somebody out there, I'm sure, that's got it leaned up against the closet for fucking the old home defense. But you imagine? It's just I wouldn't want to fucking let that thing off in the house with no ear pro on, dude. Uh, I mean, a five five six shorty. I don't know if you're even doing much at that point. I don't think so. Be better than nothing, but Adub says got to play with a TAC Benelli M3 this week. What a feat of Italian manufacturing. Yeah, so for y'all that may not be familiar, the Benelli M3 is much like the Franchi Spaz 12, which is the only tactical shotgun that Franchi ever made, to my understanding, and they no longer make it, at least for American sales, unfortunately. Shout out to Jurassic Park, though. Absolutely classic shotgun. Um and also Soldier of Fortune, dude, the old PC game, dude, you, in the subways with the fucking Spaz 12. But, um, yeah, the fucking – it's a pump. It's a convertible pump yeah, to man. semi. So you can shoot it pump with lighter loads that might not cycle in a semi-automatic or if, you know, you just need absolute, utter reliability no matter what. And then if you want to let them rip tater chip you know you can switch it over to some auto and shoot it and because it's a benelli and because it's so tried and true and proven throughout the years and holds contracts and is made with proper components and fit and finish is impeccable like on semi they typically run everything you put through it anyway if anything it might hang up on some light bird shot loads but it's a defensive tactical fighting shotgun so it's supposed to be shooting slugs and buckshot and uh with either of those it's definitely going to run and um yeah, dude, they're sick guns. I don't. I prefer the way the M4 looks aesthetically, um, and realistically, the way I look at it, uh, after shooting a semi-automatic shotgun, you're not gonna want to shoot a pump shotgun. So, to me, I would just really never use it in its pump action configuration. So, I might as well either have an M1 Super 90, an M2, or an M4, um, which all three of those are in the safe. But um, yeah, they're they're great either way you split it. They're super cool. Kenny loves the M3. Kenny only buys guns if they're in Resident Evil games, pretty much. <laughs> it's the only reason he buys guns. He's got a Stars Beretta clone, the old Samurai Edge. He wanted the SL8 because Resident Evil 4 uh, is same thing. Benelli M3 that's in a lot of the games. Um, but yeah, dude, they are, they are super cool. And it definitely blows the Spaz 12 out of the water for functionality. But the Spaz 12 looks way cooler it's super cool dude especially with the hook stock dude have you ever seen a, what i'm talking about Do you know what i'm yeah, talking about yeah yeah save the snake skin and send it to me dude yeah you gotta send him some snake skin dude to cook you up a fucking dude, custom holes snakes, dude bro. go some, out in the I fucking to, backyard I custom shit dude i ain't fucking <clears throat> what it hurts me what i moved to florida what Still ain't seen a fucking snake yeah that is fucked up it's just good though it's good no it's, it's not fucking... For I'm me, pissed. for me, dude. Pissed. I come and viz, dude. Although it'd be my luck, dude. I fucking pull up in the driveway. There's fucking looks like Indiana so Jones in the there, fucking. Dude. Yeah. Chilling. Yeah, Stag's legit. Stag is definitely a two a true two a company because back in the day, uh, they actually like got shut down for a little bit because they had a bunch of fully complete rifles with no serial numbers on them like they manufactured rifles now i'm sure it was an accident probably yeah, yeah, you know sure. i like to think that they did it on purpose because they are arming the people um or they're sending them to the cartel who knows or but uh themselves. those the ones that right home. right but yeah they got caught they with manufactured them, complete you know? firearms like this individual manufactured it yeah, right that, that just right personal manufacturing he was on break he, he was on home. break dude 100 percent I like the way you think, kid. I taught you well. <laughs> but yeah, the fucking... <clears throat> yeah, so they... From my understanding, they got shut down or whatever or had to get bought out by someone else or changed their FFL or something like that. But yeah, the stag stuff is pretty legit. 
across the board. I think their fit and finish is great. But again, aero precision, ballistic advantage, those people are who, which ballistic advantage and aero precision are one and the same. And again, aero precision OEMs, a lot of parts for BCM. So, and BCM rifles are great. Um, so yeah, the stag stuff, that whole conglomerate, that whole family of rifles, uh, one, they're all very affordably priced in my opinion for what you get. And two, like they're built well, like the components are quality. Again, the fit and finish is nice. The guns fit together tightly, uh, and they shoot well, you know, they, they shoot pretty well. You know, it's not an LWRC, an LMT, a fucking POF, nothing like that. But it also costs a thousand dollars instead of three thousand dollars, and I do not feel undergunned. One of my main go-to rifles is a five-five-six ten-five arrow that's got all the night vision shit bolted to it, and I haven't had a single issue with that. And I paid a stellar price. Shout out to Gun Lover Nine Hundred. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the fucking thing. I told his ass not to sell it, but fucking he don't listen did. to me. He don't did. fucking I didn't listen know to the nobody. Guy yet. <laughs> yeah. I was stupid. like, dude, you're stupid. You're but stupid, I, dude. I'll fucking buy it. That's why. And I was mad that he wouldn't just sell it to me in the parking lot. <sighs> yeah, well, <laughs> got to take that shit off FFL property, dude. Conflict of int, yeah. Yeah. as they say. I have no interest in anything on that property. <laughs> <laughs> my, my deal. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, dude, the fucking, I think, yeah, Arrow over fucking PSA any day, dude. And fucking, who else, who else even is, who would you think, who would you say in the AR market is a competitor to PSA as far as like, I don't even know if we could consider price point because PSA, I think, again, is getting too big for the britches and charging more for their guns than they should be, especially with their quality control issues that they've been having, um, which just seem to be ongoing. They're inter- intermittent. They'll have little stretches of good runs and then they'll have some issues and then it'll be fine again. And then they'll have some more issues. And it's not just with their new products we're seeing. It's with stuff that they've been making in theory since the beginning of the inception of their company. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they're outsourcing these parts. I don't know if they just don't care or if they're just selling so many of them that, you know, just because the increase in sales, statistically speaking, the probability and percentage of quality control issues naturally goes up. I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit of everything, but uh, who would you even argue is like, cause I would put arrow above PSA, but who yeah. would you say is like on board on the same level as a PSA? You know, I mean, I mean a fucking ATI, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you get an omni see, hybrid in this bitch, dude. The thing is, I don't know that I can <sighs> answer that question just because I have zero experience with like any lower, you know? Right. Like, I well, have when... a couple of PS. I have a PSA, a couple PSAs in the safe, and then I've got the fucking arrow behind me. Yeah, and like that's my personal. Where's experience. the bow? Hmm? Where's the bow? Ha! Huh. Got him, dude. It's funny because he's Native American, <laughs> so he is the Indian, not the arrow. This fucking guy. <clears throat> we stole his land, dude. It's fucked funny up. Funny enough, I'm shit with a bow. Here, take these blankets, though. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's just to keep you warm. We're going to um, do a deal on some land, right? Yeah. yeah dude. We're going to give you a part of New York, but then we're going to take it back later. Um, the stag pistol is bad. So, yeah, the fucking, I would say, see, I don't even know. This is the thing, dude, because... I would even trust a Delton over a fucking, I've got like 3000 rounds through that set. It's probably at the end of its lifespan, tell you the truth. Cause I'm little fucking, <laughs> them little fucking guns just beat themselves to death. It's a seven, five inch fucking five, five, six. Yeah. It's louder than That's... fuck. It's louder than fuck my, <laughs> and I got a blast can on it. That bitch is louder than yeah. fuck. Um, <laughs> if I ever have to touch that thing off inside of a dwelling or a vehicle, dude, I might just let them shoot me. Um, <laughs> but the fucking, but it, it's actually very accurate, especially for a short barrel. It's been a hundred percent reliable, except for, I think one time I got a stuck case because I was shooting steel all day. And then I switched to brass and then back to steel or whatever. I just had a bunch of mags I was grabbing out on the prop <laughs> and I got one stuck case and you squirt a little PB blaster down there and then just pop her out. Um, and, uh, that, yeah, that, that gun has been great. Dude. That, and half the shit on there is from fuck donated from the tactical scaly scales out of the tack pack box, dude. The That's fucking, true. and he gave me my brace back. The fucking, <laughs> the fucking. 
and then I painted it and I fuck I love that little I actually haven't played with that thing in a lot in a while, dude. I don't even know where it's at. It's buried in one of the safes. Um, but it's super tiny. Also another great bag gun. Um, but then again, at that point too, that's the other thing that's nice about the three hundred is because that's an eight inch barrel. The five five six is a seven five, but ballistically the 300 blackout or, you know, again, a short barreled 762 by 39 are going to perform way better and not experience as much of a drop off as you do with the lighter projectile or the 556. So, you know, it's 200 with an eight inch 300 blizzy with supers is still all day long where yeah. you get a lot of drop off with a 556 out of a 75 at, at 200. You know, you still hit them and I would not stand in front of it, but it's just, it's not ideal. The cartridge was made to be a high velocity cartridge, you know? So when you drop the barrel length, you're dropping the velocity. So, but yeah, it's still cool. It runs. And, uh, you know, other than the fact, if it had a can on it, that would be ideal. But unless you got a can to put on a little seven, five inch, five, five, six, dude, which again, I'd still only ever recommend going down to 10, five. And most guys would say stick to a 12, five or a 13, seven, 13, nine, whatever the fucking cool hype beast shit is this week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, the, what, what, uh, your arrow is, is that a 12? What is that? 10, five. Okay. With the 12 inch hand guard. Yeah, that's what it is, dude. Cause it, but then what do you have hanging off the end of it? A blast can or something? Yeah. 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 So, cause I thought it was longer. I thought it was maybe a 12 inch gun, but yeah, you do have that full length <coughs> and then the, uh, and beyond. Yeah. Did you ever figure out what that trigger was? Yeah. That was the, got... uh, and now I forgot again. <laughs> cause that thing is nice, dude. It is. That It's very crisp and yeah. it, it wasn't crazy money, right? No. Let's see here. Stag is arrow. Arrow is adopting in part the PSA model of absorbing companies and expanding on them. See their new bolt suppressor and lever gun lines. Uh, I did do Well, they've been doing the bolt action stuff for a little while now. And uh, my buddy actually built a rifle off of like their chassis receiver thing. And he seems to like it quite a bit for the money. Again, it's not a fucking McMillan or nothing, but um, it also doesn't cost that money. So the trigger that I have in there is a JMT black ops six. Is that made by Infinity Ward? <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? <clears throat> Do I have to buy Xbox Live to shoot that thing? Yeah, dude. Um, no, that thing is nice though. It's fucking. It's red though, isn't it? Or some no. fucking no, it's silver nice. fuck. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I knew it was a different color. It's James Madison Tactical. Dude, it's a nice trick, dude. And you've had nothing but reliability out of it, yeah, right? No issues whatsoever. Yeah. That's decent, dude. Yeah, I usually leave all my shit stock mill spec but well i usually don't change it out of factory configuration like that wilson i got has their two-stage really nice trigger on it and some of my other shit but yeah if i'm buying a rifle or like a complete lower or fucking whatever i i don't put no geisley super three guns in it or whatever because while that's nice and great and obviously they're proven and reliable and good to go um for sure the mil spec stuff is good to go and has the most testing behind it and yeah. you know i the, the heavy trigger pull you know again it's still what five six yeah. pounds tops and you yeah. shoot the gun enough it breaks in like yeah. it doesn't bother me i shoot double action wheel guns sure. all the time Every other AR in this house, aside from this one, has a uh, CMMG trigger. Yeah, so. CMMG. I use the APF parts kits. Um, I've got BCM parts kits in guns. I've got... What was that other thing I bought? We were cobbling together that one night. Some fucking other random company that made shit. There's been so many nights that we just built out low. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah, there was a lot of alcohol involved, dude. Yes, fucking yes. springs There's flying everywhere. Involved <laughs> in a lot of things we've done. Yeah, good times, good times indeed. Dude. It's on my hip right now. What? And more alcohol? Yeah. No, no, it was a lot of alcohol involved. Oh right. <laughs> and right there. Right. Right. <laughs> You can, even in the camera, you can see the fucking skin imprinted into the fucking. <laughs> yeah, you can, dude. Oh, fucking. You're shedding, dude. You fucking lizard dude. purse. You're a fucking use, lizard man. purse, dude. It's use. Nah, dude. Yeah, dude. Out here in West Virginia, some of the good old boys out in Wayne, 
the Vatican of rednecks hunt deer with 338 Lapua. Why? But then again, why have a truck payment higher than your mortgage, dude? Yeah, dude. I mean, I guess truck if you wanted you money, be, the house just takes you. You want it to. That's true. Hey, that's true. The it's very true. But they're getting a little crazy with these truck prices lately. But if uh, you that's buy a Corvette true. for the same price as a fucking uh, Chevrolet fucking Silverado. Yeah. But uh, I'd rather have the Silverado anyway. It's but really the difficult fucking... when an Escalade is starting to look like a reasonable price compared to a Chevy pickup truck. Yeah, uh, well, the Chevy pickup trucks, as we all know, are the best pickup trucks. So, uh, you know, yes. well, you got to pay for qual, but, uh, you know, it is getting a little, little exorbitantly priced. Um, but yeah, 338 Lapua when deer hunting for when you want it to be cooked by the time you walk up to it. Um, I'm see, I, I'm, I see what you're saying about Anasala. He's a cuck. Top five this, top five. That's what I'm saying, dude. He fucking, all he does is fucking look at this new Springfield Armory. Look at this fucking Turkish piece of shit. Look at this fucking... You know, it, it, I don't get it, dude. Like, whatever. He When he first started off, like, he's a big 1911 guy. He's a competition shooter. You know, we had that in common. And uh, he can shoot. He's a good shot. And uh, while he's cheesy, I guess so am I and anyone else. But, um, you know, I appreciated he was shooting 1,000-round reviews and this, that, and the thing. You know, he had a lot of the newest guns that were coming out as far as, like, 2011s and 1911s and Wilson this, and Nighthawk that. And then it just turned into fucking Canix and Gersons and Springfield Armories, and he's like, these are the best thing ever. It's like, get the fuck, dude. Little gingerbread man, dude. 300 blackout, very versatile, very useful, easily set up for subs and for decent reaching, dude. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, dude. With just a mag change, you have two different guns. So... Delton over PSA, fuck PSA, dude. Yeah, I'm with the Delton shit, dude, for sure. But again, I still don't know who would fucking even... Bear Creek, maybe. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know. Delton was good back in the day. Yeah, that's the thing, dude. People are sleeping on Delta. They're still good. They're and they're still very, very affordably priced. Um, I got my Lima pistol after watching an hour long nut and fancy review about him and tactical doodles that they bought and shot the shit out of and accuracy tested and this, that, and the other thing. And the guns were great. And I've had the same exact experience with mine and I paid $381 for it out the door. It was a complete gun. It didn't have a brace on it, but m handguard, seven and a half inch, five, five, six, you know, standard a two grip, flat top, whatever. But, um, yeah, dude, fucking absolutely impressed across the board. They've been making mil spec cage code parts for the longest time. And, they people fucking shit on them because nobody knows what the fuck a Delton is, even though they've been around longer than half these fly by night pop up AR companies and they're doing it better for less. Um, but they're just not as snazzy looking. They don't have a bunch of Cerakoted guns or fucking whatever. Like it's just standard all black looking shit. But they run, dude. I think Delton honestly is the best bang for the buck for that price point. Yeah. Um, they're half the price of a PSA and I think better. So, but who knows? What do I know? PSA is a bit of an anomaly. They cover a lot of ground and their prices are quite low. They got a lot of people started. Yeah, back in the day, but now they're too many irons in the fire. They got too many products having issues. They want to release products, but then they never come to market. They got everybody hyped up over it. They're doing a bunch of meme shit. And by all means, it's capitalism. Do what you want. People want to buy it. They're going to buy it. And obviously people do want to buy it. But just working in a gun shop and having to deal with them as a company As far as like the dealer side of the house, they're pretty shitty. And then on top of that, they are not as pro Second Amendment as everybody would like to think because they were doing some sus shit where even though they would totally like it's totally cool for people before the ban and shit, they were not sending magazines with guns because they lived in Cook County or whatever, which it's not up to them to fucking make that decision or not. And it's totally legal for those people to own those those items um so it's there plus the prices are getting higher the quality control is is getting lower in my opinion because that we see they come in for repair people transfer them in or we order them or whatever which we don't even deal with them anymore as a company because they fucked us over um they fuck a lot of people over but it was really because they they didn't even really fuck us over they were fucking the customer over and just dealing with them through that situation made us be like nah we're not doing business with you idiots anymore um, but yeah, the fucking, the Galdang, it's just, it, it's a shame because I, I, what they stood for originally, I could totally get behind, 
we want to put a rifle in everybody's safe. We want to arm America. We're Second Amendment this. We're bringing it to you the best we can for the lowest price. And it's just not that anymore, dude. It's just not. Contractor 556, what are you getting into tonight? Now, we've already gotten to quite a bit. We're almost two hours yeah. into the pod. Dude. Truck prices are crazy. I just spent 21 k plus tax plus 37.50 for a three-year warranty on a fucking 2019 Ford. Well, that's your problem. There's your sign. Buying that Ford shit, dude. 111,000 miles, dude. I'm surprised that thing still rolls, but only downhill, I would assume. It's ridiculous, but I'm stuck in before times, dude. Truck's really, really clean and runs good, but still, what the fuck, dude? Back in the day. Correct. Indeed. Indubitably. Yo, we got the Tempted Adverse back in the house. Dude, we got Warsaw Patriot. What's up? What's up? So. He's out here, dude. I see you're asking the fucking Bishop on Air fucking Discord videos all the time. That's sick. You guys are like homies now. Shout out to Bishop on Air. He's a he's a true journalist. We saw him at the iGold fucking thing. Which speaking of which, iGold is April 18th. So four days from now, I'm not going because I'm sick of their shit. I'm not either. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, the fucking a bit more than a few hours drive. Yeah, sure. yeah, and it would be definitely not worth it. No, which no. sucks. Although I'd like to see, I'd like to see how it turns out, because if it turns out after all of this, after everything that has fucking transpired in this state, if they, because this is the thing, they're not out there marketing. Where are you on YouTube? Where are you on Instagram? Where are you on your website showing dudes in kit instead of your fucking pellet gun leagues or your fucking muzzle loader FUD bullshit? Like you are only appealing to people 87 years old and, and older. Like get the fuck out of here, dude. And you want to say you're, you're second amendment, you're doing this. You're, what are you doing, dude? Because you can't do it by yourself. If you don't have members, you don't have money. And people are not going to want to join your organization unless they're already lifetime NRA members and fucking have AARP cards because that's all you're marketing to. And I'm sick of it, dude. I'm sick of promoting them and telling them people that, hey, oh, they're the only reason we got concealed carry in Illinois, which is true. And they did do good with that. But what have you done for me lately, bro? What What is going on with all of this? Yeah. What is going on with all of this, dude? And so I would like to see what the numbers actually turn out to be this time around after everything that's fucking happened. But again, I would argue probably, yeah, no shit, no fucking shit. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, nothing's going to change that until we get thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people there to shut down the whole city, block off all the traffic, make it inconvenient for everybody. So at least you make a statement to where like, Hey, we don't want to deal with this anymore. Just fucking let them have it and we'll leave them alone. And we won't have, you know, whatever it is, if that's, if that's how you got to get the win, get the win. But we can't even get 10, 15,000 people out of 3 million plus gun owners in the state of Illinois. You out of your fucking minds, people. And you want to say your second amendment, your pro second amendment, your pro freedom, your, Oh, from my cold dead hands, motherfucker. So, like, the first time we went there. It was, like, 10,000 people. And we went into the Capitol building. It was, like, you couldn't yeah. get through people. And it was awesome. And, but even that is still disappointing compared to the number of people that should have been there. Was that the time where they confiscated my bullhorn? Yeah. Yeah. And told you you couldn't wear your, wear your right. cape. Right. Right. But somebody walked in with a gay pride flag or something. They let yep. them by. Yep. So. Whatever. Cops are gay. So, it makes sense. But. Yeah. All the sense in the world. So the best was when I got yelled at by that one bitch for u- utilizing her work desk. Right. Right. To write down on the counter. It's on the counter that nobody right. was at on a fucking 10 foot wide circular desk in the middle of a fucking lobby. Mm-hmm. That nobody was at. Nobody was around. Yeah, that was definitely racially motivated for sure. Yeah, yeah. 100%. She's like, white boy, get your shit off my counter, fool. What you say? So this, this this is my workspace. Well, I'm doing work. All right? yeah. I'm writing down some shit. Right, and you work for the government, so we know there ain't nothing getting yeah, done around exactly. here, motherfucker. Especially yo ass, bitch. Bitch, I pay taxes with my desk. Fuck out you of here. You shouldn't pay taxes. That's your problem. Yeah, exactly. Um, that was my first mistake. Warsaw says, TT, apart from the gun issue, I have a feeling that this whole legal issue topic has really given some people some thought about what they are, were actually voting for and now how to resolve the issues and now want to resolve the issues. Uh, you would think 
you would think. But again, I don't again, I don't believe necessarily, at least on a federal level, that the votes count. And on a state level that the fucking who's more corrupt than Jabba the Hutt Prickster did as far as a government fucking Newsom or fucking what's his face from uh, California. California, whoever that guy is, that fucking guy's a piece of shit. They're all pieces of shit. So, I mean, I really don't trust it like either way. And I find it almost to be a waste of time. And people have been saying this since the beginning of time. And George Carlin, many, many moons ago, you know, one big club and you ain't in it. If I wanted to masturbate instead of going to voting, you know, if I wanted to go fuck myself or whatever, instead of going to vote and I stay home and masturbate, whatever the bit is like, they, it's been rigged for so long, dude. And obviously, even if it wasn't the last time, it for sure was. To, so to think that they, they've done it already and they're not going to do it again is is a crazy concept to me. Because they've already proven nothing happened. Nobody held them account, accountable. Nobody was hung in the fucking town square. Nobody was dragged out of their office and tar and feathered. Nobody was fucking nothing. Nobody went to jail. Nobody went to fucking, except for us except for people that believe in freedom and took a tour of a building that they pay for with their goddamn tax dollars. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's until we, the people are ready and willing and prepared to actually stand up for freedom in a meaningful way. I don't know that the votes fucking matter in the least bit. So I'm distancing myself further and further from the political scheme. Um, as far as the system that is set up to fail you in each and every instance, and more so encouraging people to live outside the realm of the rules that are created by the powers that should not be and and live by their own moral compass and their own truth. Like, again, if I had RPGs in my safe, I wouldn't be blowing shit up for no reason. It'd be the same as me having a 30 out six or a five, five, six or a 22. I'm going to shoot it on the range and have fun, which I don't know exactly what range you can shoot an RPG on. I have to go to actually. tanks. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. I guess. Yeah. I, well, I don't know about the tie that you probably blow the ties out there, dude. I mean, yeah. I mean, I Plus RPGs don't really words. fucking shoot that straight. Most of the times so <laughs> you got to be careful. You might skip that yeah, motherfucker dude. into it's fucking fine, orange County. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, hit fucking West Coast chops or whatever it is. <laughs> Pretty sure that's Orange giant. County chops, yeah, Orange County chops or whatever it was. But uh, yeah, dude, I just I have no faith in the political system whatsoever, uh, at least on a state or federal level. And um, yeah, I just I just don't. I think your time is spent better preparing for the impending apocalypse. Uh, and again, that sounds drastic and it might not be an apocalypse. It's, you know, the title of the video tonight is Tia Tawaki, the end of the world as we know it. And it already happened. We used to know a different world. Things used to be different. And now that has come to an end. And now this is the new world, the new world order, the dark winter, the fucking new normal, whatever the fuck they said it, they meant it. And now we're all living it and people have accepted it yet again because everybody's too fucking comfortable and complacent. So until they get unruly, until they get sick of fucking being a bunch of cucks, I don't think none of this is going to change votes or not. I gold is a lost cause as well as the corrupt sellout ISRA. Yeah, it's and it's fucked up. It's fucked up, dude. They're a bunch of fucking FUD busters, dude. For helping out with Todd with Sadek. I don't know what the fuck that is. Fill us in. They're doing the change. What are we talking about? And helping's in the fight. Washington gun law is even comment. Coming to Illinois next month in May, he's visiting Law Weapons in Naperville with Beavis. Yeah, but we went to fucking, we were there till 2 o'clock in the morning fucking fighting for that motherfucker in his gun shop at a Naperville town hall meeting, the last one before they officially decided that the shit was banned for good. We outnumbered these motherfuckers like 6 to 10 to 1. There was a bunch of excellent speakers it went through the whole fucking rigmarole. They fucking let everybody stay there till two o'clock in the morning just to say, yeah, well, regardless of the things that have been presented to us and to say we've made up our minds and just like it was a slap in the face, dude. They're lucky they had fucking cops there. And then the fucking cops think it's funny and shit because yeah, I asked, them, what do you think about this? Laughing. They're fucking. Yeah. So they're a bunch of jackbooted thugs in the state, dude. They don't give a fuck about a you. They think they're there. different. There 30 than, motherfuckers right, in there waiting. Right. Right. So. You know, it's like, it's just, it's all bullshit, dude. But Beavis, now given he definitely got fucked 
But that's kind of what you get, bro, because law weapons catered to the police. That it was their whole thing. They're big fucking cop cucks, and they love it. They love that thin blue line. And uh, you see what happens. Now it's them that are your enemy. It's them that would be enforcing these tyrannical laws upon you. It's them that's going to be at your door confiscating your assault weapons. So that's what you get. You want to fucking play in their pocket, dude? Now you got to live in it. And, and you know, it sucks. And I'm, I'm against it completely as far as the anti-2A side of it. But Beavis definitely loves him some law enforcement. And when the law enforcement has been become tyrannical and is enforcing laws outside of the Constitution and not upholding the oaths that they swore, that is not something that should be supported, especially so vehemently as he does. So, uh, you know, you made your bed, you got to lie in it. More corrupt, try Gavin Newsom, Gavin Newsom, who's been in politics for 10 years. Yeah, well, they're all fucking... 277 Fury is the new hot shit. I don't know about that. That's what the fucking U.S. government says, but fuck the U.S. government. Unreal cannot believe the insanity going on in America nowadays, dude. Yeah, you ain't fucking lying. Oh, I'm way behind. <clears throat> yeah, literally still TT accepting defeatism is not an... Well, it's not. I'm not defeated, though. I, I feel as if I'm freed of the bullshit, and now I can progress things for myself, my preparedness. I could use my time more wisely and get more benefit out of that time instead of waiting in line to cast a vote that doesn't even get counted and think I'm doing something. Um, I like getting active more than that because again, the the whole, the people typically that are so hung up on voting, oh, you got to vote, you got to vote, you got to vote. That's all they fucking do. They're the same type of people that are Christians that only go to church on Easter. And it's not even a fucking Christian holiday. It's a fucking pagan Egyptian fertility holiday. So you get the bunny and the eggs. You guys don't even know what the fuck you're doing. You don't even know what the fuck you're celebrating. You just do it because everybody else does it. And that's the same herd mentality that got us fucking here to begin with. Well, that's different. At least you know what you're doing. (laughs) Not with the sex part, by any means, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you did pump out a little baby. Got a little baby. Well, it could have been medically induced. We don't know, dude. <laughs> it's all. You know, I ain't got this. <laughs> it was a government program, dude. You guys got a stipend or something. Oh. Um, but yeah, dude, I just, I don't think, I think it's fucking a waste of time. I think it's theater. I think it's dog and pony. I think it's distraction. It gets everybody. Cause even, and again, too, even if I believed, that the votes actually counted. If it's between Biden and Trump, I don't want either of them. I don't. And the lesser of two evils argument, which everybody always argues, is a defeatist attitude. Because, oh, well, we can't get what we want, so we're going to settle. How is that not defeated? No. That's bullshit. So I wouldn't vote for either of them anyway. So my vote wouldn't have been counted regardless because I'd be fucking writing in Ron or Rand Paul in this bitch, dude. So, I mean, that is what it is. And people might not like it or agree with it. And yeah, the cheap fucking gas prices and more money on your pay stub and all that's nice. But the money is fucking fiat bullshit currency to begin with. It's all a facade already. It's not backed by shit, and it's not worth the paper it's printed on. So what the fuck does it matter? I mean, yeah, if you have more of it, you can exchange it to fools that think it has value for goods and services in the meantime before the complete and total collapse. But other than that, what the fuck does it matter? So I don't know. What do you think about that? As far I know you're still on the on the train of I'm going to vote regardless just in case it counts, and I was that for many, many moons, and now I'm just kind of over it. But like as far as like – how much the voting aside and if it matters or not, but how much it matters between Biden and Trump, like what what do you think the difference realistically would be? It's a giant douche and a turd sandwich, bro. Exactly, dude. South Park had it right. <laughs> <It's... coughs> Where he says Simpsons predicts everything. Yeah. Watch South Park, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The Simpsons have a pretty good track record of fucking predicting the fucking well, future. Think, it's not I a prediction, it's just fucking... a I'm pretty just sure telling South secrets. predicted every presidential election the past, like, three of them, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a little bit easier to, because you can fucking see the fucking ties, but to yeah. fucking have random pictures of the fucking Twin Towers in the background yeah. with a plane heading towards it, that's a little fucking yeah. on the nose, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but yeah, 
the fucking, I just like, I mean, so obviously again, like I said, fucking as far as financially speaking (laughs) under Trump, we were better, but how much of that really was due to Trump or was it mostly placebo that got people more confident in the market and invested more of their money and started buying more things because they felt safer doing so, you know, and now I don't know. Well, even but it is, even if it is, it yeah. technically still be because Trump was in office. Right. But right. I, I really don't know because I'm in the same boat as you. I don't want either of them, you know, Yeah. but I don't know who I would want. Who do I actually trust? Either way. I mean, I would definitely, at least with Trump, like fucking Shane Gillis says, dude, it'd be fucking funnier. Like the yeah, news, that is, that instead is, of, <laughs> instead of like, life was more. <laughs> yeah, it was. True. It was, dude. So like, and even if you get the same outcome, you know, like we're going to World War Three, like Biden, like when Biden says it, it's like, holy shit, this fucking tyrannical dictator is fucking ruining everybody's lives. But yeah. when Trump was like, he'd be like on Twitter, like, fuck you guys. We're going to bomb the shit out of you. You guys are fucking fuck pussies. you, Iran. You yeah. bitch ass missile. Who do you <laughs> right. think you Right, dude. You guys get, we have our best people, the best missile technology. So like it, that, at least it would lighten the mood a little bit. It'd be a morale boost, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So I guess there are. When when the missiles come in and Mm -hmm. bomb us all, you know, we'd be laughing during our deaths. Yeah. So I guess that there's something that can be said for that. But other than that, I really don't know that there's really that much of a tangible difference as far as the long-term outcome of what plays out and what happens. Because, we could very well be in a war before the next election. Then they could somehow spin that to be like, hey, we're not even going to have an election because we're at war and shit's crazy right now. And, you know, we have these things set up in play or whatever bullshit. And everybody would go along with it. Everybody, nobody's going to do nothing. What are you going to do? I mean, there's definitely things you can and should do yes. for life and liberty. But most people are not going to is what I'm saying. Because we, obviously we're here now because of that, you know, weak men, hard times, that that's, whole thing. That's the only thing, though. Is which one would you rather have as president during a war like that, though? Yeah, no, for sure. The fucking the whole bit about fucking Abu fucking something Baghdadi. He died like a dog. He was crying. I said, this man, he's crying. He's fucking <laughs> the head of ISIS. He's crying. He died. <clears throat> but the fucking. Yeah. So, I mean, I get it, dude. And I I voted for him fucking twice already, you know, and the first time I was all gung ho, dude, MAGA hat and everything in this bitch. I had the MAGA hat. I had (laughs) fucking, and on that hat, I had a pin that said, Donald is my homeboy. Okay. That's, yeah, dude. I was real excited to vote for Donald Trump. Yeah. Second time I wasn't so excited. Yeah. So, you know, because. I like I like taking the guns first. Then you get the due process. Ban the bump stocks. Suppresses. I don't like them at all. Yet his child sits on Silencer Co's fucking board of fucking executive, whoever the fucks. Like, it's just absurd, the hypocrisy. And again, what, what fucking grinds my gears and boils my red lobster even more is that nobody calls them out on it. And then when you do call them out on it, you're called Antifa. When you're trying to stand up for freedom and the second amendment, you're like, yo, I get it. He's funny. He was really good in the debates. You know, he was definitely better on foreign policy. The economy's better. That's all great. But like, hey, the second amendment, the whole fucking reason this country is this country, uh, you know, he has massively infringed upon and all these fucking NRA members are fucking, oh, you fucking, you lefty, you fucking liberal, you're woke, you're fucking, it's like, no, dude, you're an idiot. You're a useful idiot, dude, to the powers that should not be. So knock it off. You know? Well, certain somebody that's uh, quite close, even at this moment, was completely brainwashed into thinking that the bump stock ban was under Biden and not Trump. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. And that's crazy, dude. Took quite a while, and he was quite mad at me for <laughs> trying to convince him otherwise. You could have just pulled up one Google article. I, I did. That's it's it's nuts. He was even from Fox News. Yeah. <laughs> and he didn't want to believe. It. I wouldn't blame the cops or the sheriffs. I blame the state government lying to the people. First, the Aurora incident in 2019. How would you not blame the cops or the sheriffs, though? 
because they're the ones that all swore oaths to this constitution to uphold it. And they work for us. We, the people, we pay their salaries as cliche and everybody hates hearing that, whatever, like they literally are supposed to be public servants, not jackbooted thugs of the state or the city or the town or whatever. And while there are definitely good cops out there, and I know a few of them, it's just that it's a few of them. Majority of the assholes that fucking come into the gun shop or that I know as friends or family or fucking passing by or whatever. And my dealings with them getting pulled over or fucking whatever it may be throughout my life. Um, most of them have a superiority complex. They think because they got a badge and a gun that they're better and or different than you and that they have any type of power over you. Like I, I really, they act like they got level four armor on dude all the time. And they don't, they don't dude. They got level two or three a shit, dude. It's pistol rated only. And uh, most of these dudes can't shoot. Most of these dudes can't even disassemble a Glock pistol without damn near shooting themselves or putting it together with spare parts left out on the table. So some of them can't even. Fucking Glock <laughs> yeah. Or pistol. fucking get, what was or the dude with the belt? Mount a fucking <laughs> to their belt. <laughs> right. Right. Dude. Crook County Sheriff, dude, in the heart of gangland, this motherfucker can't put his holster on his belt. It wasn't even, from what I remember, he wasn't even just a sheriff. He was also on some special team or some shit. Yeah, and yeah. Did not oh, know. he was on the special team, well, all right. That one fucking guy. Special team, bro. That fucking <laughs> guy, dude. I'll tell you that. It's just, it's absurd, dude. I have, I have very, very, very minimal respect for law enforcement these days. And it, it's a shame because the dudes that are really out there doing it, and doing it properly and doing it constitutionally. It's a hard job. It's a thankless job. You get shit on all the time. It's very dangerous. You might not come home to your loved ones, this, that, and the third, but the tyrants out there and the jackbooted thugs and the idiots and the fucking people with an agenda, the people with a a bully complex, the people that weren't hugged enough and you give them a badge and a gun, they're just out there to ruin your day and or your life. And they know they're going to get away with it. Look at the fucking shit. If any of us, fucking threw 30 shots into a fucking truck because an acorn dropped on top of it we'd be fucking hung in the town square ourselves like it's just crazy dude our governor and the state government is the problem no you're you're thinking too small man it's way deeper than that it's the people the idiot people that do not want to exercise their rights and are trying to infringe upon others and making the government do so for them and then also the government has no power. The fucking J.B. Pritzker fat ass is not showing up to your door to confiscate the guns. Guess who he's sending? The motherfucking police. And the police that show up that are willing to do that are tyrants and do not deserve to hold that office or that title or that badge or that fucking gun. Everybody bleeds like we bleed, man. They they piss like we... Well, they probably piss sitting down, to tell you the yeah. truth, but... Um, I only yeah. do that after two minutes. They're not minutes. invincible. They're not. Well, that's just for a stabilization effect. You know, yeah, you don't want to yeah. fucking hurt yourself. But compromising morals and principles is evil. Exactly, dude. Stay true to what you believe. Stay true to who you are. My hood out in these woods is Operation Z Zigger neighbor. What? God bless the third row, Mother Russia. I have no idea what I just fucking read. Don't vote. It only encourages them. Well, I mean, I'm not telling people not to vote. I think people should make their own decisions, which is all I ever tell people to do. And all I ever try and do is get them to think for themselves. I'm just giving you my opinions and how I feel about it. And in a lot of cases, the facts of the matter, like this is proven shit. A lot of the shit that I talk about, you can look it up. It's verifiable. And once you start putting the pieces together and stop being so optimistic about the government, it's pretty blatantly obvious that they're only here to fuck you. So truth really upsets most people. Yeah, there you go. Trump hasn't been touting his no new wars brag on the campaign trail. We're definitely going to war no matter who is in office. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're already there. We've been funding both sides, playing both sides for fools since day one, dude. We're fucking, we got our hand in every cookie jar, dude. Like I said in the video, like it's fucking, it just is what it is. America's always been the police of the world. Like, oh, we're going to get the oil here. We're going to fucking buff up the military industrial complex over there. We're going to fucking go take out these people that are threats. They made ISIS, dude. They made fucking, the CIA made Al Qaeda, dude. They did, George Bush is responsible for 9-11, dude. It was an inside job, dude. So again, I'm not worried about these other countries and what they got going on. We should not, as a country, be worried about these other countries and what the fuck they got going on unless it is impending doom or danger to us. 
and I get the whole NATO ally shit. But we really don't need that because, A, we're the only motherfuckers that contribute to it financially and equipment-wise. B, what? who the fuck do you think is going to show up if we did get invaded or we're fighting a war in America? It would be us, not fucking anybody from NATO, I guarantee you, unless they were here to try and enact martial law on our citizens. In which case, they're also the enemy. Right. Soup bowls from Blue Helmets, the new Etsy store, opening soon. Um, It'd be hard to do, though. You'd have to patch the holes somehow. At least Trump speaks the truth when people don't want it. What Trump has, what speak, what's, what truth has Trump spoken? Has he ever told why he's friends with Epstein or why he was on the flight logs? <laughs> has he ever said why he claimed to be Second Amendment and then had more gun control under him than the first in his first two years than eight years of Obama? Um, what truth is he telling, dude? Because I, I don't know that he's any different than the rest of them. Everyone is at, what, when did he drain the swamp? Remember when he said he was going to drain the swamp? If anything, that motherfucker rose in its water level. So everyone is acting like a pansy because they don't want it there. I don't know what that even means. Risky Krisky said that shit. They're going to use a war or something to delete the election. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, they could do it any way they want. It doesn't matter. And even if they have it, they'll just steal it again. Are you going to sit there and count every single vote in the country yourself? Because that'd be the only way you could actually verify it. And then how do you know that those ballots you were handed were even real to begin with? You know what I'm saying? It's too easy. It's too fucking easy. And nobody holds them accountable. So until these people get held accountable in one way, shape, or form or another, it's not going to change, dude. It's not. It's going to be the same old shit, dude. It's dog and pony. It's theater. It's fucking facade. It's illusion. It's smoke and mirrors, man. It sounds crazy, but everybody is so fucking conditioned. That's why they send you to fucking school as a youngin for the initial part until you're an adult, basically. So you get used to waking up at a certain time to go to work. You're used to being there for eight hours a day. You're used to listening to everything that authority tells you. They're preconditioning you from a child until your adult formative years. And being able to break out of that is not the easiest thing to do. But if you don't, you're fucked. I mean, we're all fucked anyway, I guess. But you guys are even more fucked if that's what you got going on, dude. The fact that the Satanists despise Donald J. Trump to the point of utter insanity says so much to me. They're still going nuts in the mention of his name. He really went soft on American enemies. And so, again, though. The whole I've talked about it many times. The whole Trump could be the great deceiver thing if you're a Christian biblical guy. Uh, Because at first it says he comes as your friend and everybody loves him. And then when he comes back, that's when, and we're seeing this now. It also says in the Bible that uh, the end times are when Jerusalem falls. What the fuck is going on right now, motherfuckers? So uh, it just, it seems all too easy to put two and two together, but that's how they get you is it makes too much sense that it must not be real, dude. That's crazy. What a coincidence, dude. What are you, some kind of crazy conspiracy theorist? Get the tinfoil out of your hat. And that's how they get you. They shame you into not thinking for yourself. And even if you're not right, the fact that you thought about it for yourself and came to a different conclusion other than the one that was force fed to you is good. It's good. It's good cognitive function. Good using the most powerful tool that you have at your disposal. Whether you you fail or not, like just using it, exercising it once in a while. It fucking getting all fucking riled up, dude. It just it bothers me, dude. It just bothers me so much because I I hate to see my fellow countrymen and women fall for such easy schemes dude and i hope i'm wrong i hope i'm wrong but i would have to argue if trump gets in he might be the great deceived dude he might because end times are nigh dude we're living in it and uh you know the locusts will be so thick that they cover the air it's black hawk helicopters motherfucker we're in this bitch I'm telling you, this shit ain't sweet, bro, bro. You better get yourself right with God. Get yourself right squared away. Make sure good zeros on your rifle. And you got plenty of beans, bullets, and band-aids, bitches, because you're going to need them. Unless you just want to willfully go to the FEMA camps. But not I, sir. Not I. (sighs) 
not saying though I didn't agree with the Trump rationing off the Second Amendment and giving the ATF. So, so that's what I'm saying, dude. The way the the bump stock ban was written, so vaguely and so interpretive, and the way that that law, which is not law because it wasn't approved by Congress and this, that, and the third, went into effect, and people were affected by it, has opened up the wide open trigger FRT shit has opened up the brace shit has opened up all this. So it's not just the, Oh, I don't care about bump stocks. I never had one. I think it's stupid and fucking who cares. It it's just across the board. Infringement is infringement. And this is honestly a pretty <clears throat> massive one. And they are doing these things very calculated. It's not just by happenstance there. I mean, the, yes, they throw everything at the wall and see what sticks, but they're learning, dude. When they wrote the Illinois assault weapons ban, they had to have had some people that knew a lot about guns, which to me would mean that they are somewhat pro-gun, fucking write this shit out for them. Because down to the fucking exact make and model and fucking, you know, every type of little feature, like it wasn't fucking vaguely bullshit written where like there was easy workaround and loopholes like the 94 ban. Like this shit is very flushed out, very thorough. Like they they are learning, they're improving, they're adapting, and uh, they're winning. Mostly because people sit idly by and do fucking jack shit about it, but also because we're just, I don't know, resting on our laurels, I guess. We're fucking, nobody fucking... Nobody questions anything. Nobody fucking does anything. Nobody fucking stands up against anything. Oh, I don't want to fucking cause a problem. I don't want to be on a list. I don't want to fucking, you know, get awkward at the Thanksgiving dinner table. I don't want to fucking fuck that shit, dude. You're not living free. You're not living as an American. You might as well go live in one of these overseas European countries that's infested with a bunch of fucking terrorists that are fucking rape, robbing and pillaging every other day. You might as well. Because the way that you keep acting, you're going to cause that same shit to come here. So you might as well just get it out of the way. But I know shit's bad right now with all that starving bullshit and the dust storms and we running out of French fries and burrito coverings. But I got a solution, dude. Sick. All cops are the same. Cry bully gun thugs for the state. A lot of them. Yeah. Most definitely. Again, there's a few good apples sprinkled in between, but the bad ones spoil the bunch. If voting mattered, it would not be allowed. Again, it's super simple. Super simple. It it, it tells you enough right then and there. Like, again, it's a bumper sticker. It's old saying. It's cliche. But it's true, dude. If voting mattered, it would be illegal. Because you think the people that are in power, that have all this money, have all this control, do you think they would ever want to give that up? No. Shot 500 rounds through the new AT Mini 14. Sweet gun. I pity you, fool. Brings World War III here, dude. He's booging with the fucking A team, dude. You better have a fucking white van with a spoiler on it or some shit, dude. I thought their van was black. I don't know. I thought it was with white the with the accents. No, yeah, you're right. It was black with red. What was the white one, OJ? No, that was the Bronco. <laughs> no, that was the Bronco. <laughs> the white, <laughs> was the, was the the white van was... Picked you up by the park yeah, you told day. me I had candy and fucking <laughs> BB guns. I never got yeah. the BB guns. But uh, I did get a lollipop. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He had to blindfold you first, though. It was salty. Yeah, you said it was like that Mexican candy. The fucking, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. it's it's an acquired it's soft, taste. It's strange. Right. <laughs> well, at first, at least, but the fucking, there's like a chemical reaction or something that happens. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't question anything, you might as well live like a cog in a machine. Well, exactly. But that's what I'm saying is you're. Not that you're coming at me, but you're questioning me, questioning the government, which I think the government should be questioned no matter who they are, when they are, where they are, like, period. Like, we should have learned that since the inception of this country, and I thought that we did. You know, that's that's why this country is this country. But now, this country is not this country because we don't have any rights anymore. Uh, we do, right? We, but people just don't act like it. And so if you don't exercise those rights they become weak and wither away therefore you no longer practically have them so because they have given them up because rights cannot be taken from you you can only ever give them up if they say hey you can't own guns period for any reason you are the one giving up your rights by giving up your guns if you say no fuck you come and take them or whatever real g's move in silence like lasagna you're not going to say nothing but you're still going to have them or whatever it is You have that option, and that is freedom, and that is the whole purpose of the Second Amendment, is to combat tyranny. So everybody's option to combat tyranny is just to let them do it, is what it seems like. Like, that's what I don't understand. 
So, but yeah. With Trump, I think inflation will drop, gas will get better, but we will drill for oil here. We'll slow legal sneaking in, and this ATF will do less than what Joe's did. I don't know that because, again, the ATF was doing fucking all types, doing more shit under the first two years of Trump than eight years of Obama. So I don't know that that would be true. The other shit you said would probably be true. But as far as the gun shit, I don't really think that he is going to make a difference. It might even be worse. Okay, I don't like any politician. What's your opinion? on Honestly, I haven't looked into it too much. I've kind of been out of the loop. Like I've seen little shit here and there. Um, I think he's probably still a little bit too lefty, but. I, I guess anybody of what he's uh what his comment was what read the rest of his comment wouldn't go after people's guns but if Congress had made a bill in both Dems Republicans voted for it he would sign yeah so exactly that's the thing the, 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 the whole if you're the fucking president of the United States if anybody should have to uphold the Constitution it should be that motherfucker yep and it just seems to not be the norm anymore he, he's so, not the one that get yeah. that his whole job at that point is to limit Congress's powers. That is the point of the presidency. Not just go along with it because they say so. <clears throat> so Jack Bauer saying, no politician is good, but God knows four more years of this poop, we will be disarmed. And so again, more gun control under the first two years of Trump than eight years of Obama. So you can't say that, that we would be more disarmed. And on top of that, again, no matter who the fuck is the president, no matter who the fuck the cops are, no matter who the fuck the feds are, no matter who the fuck any of these fucks are, you cannot be disarmed unless you're laying there dead in a pile of brass. And yeah, that's a personal, if you choose to give up your rights for safety and security, which you'll receive and deserve neither, then that's your problem. But you can't be disarmed. If you are currently armed, unless you choose to be, it, it, that decision lies only with you, nobody else, no matter who they are. So y'all hear about Corn Pops corrupt a AFT murdering the executive director at Little Rock Airport. Yeah, there was there was definitely some shit going on. That was a hit because he knew something about the Clintons for sure. Um, but also, yeah, the ATF will just kill you for no reason. That's They've... the scary part because we all know something about the Clintons. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, it's all publicly available information, of course. <laughs> yeah. But... So if anything, they got to kill the yeah, internet, which running. they probably the Clintons, will. They're, they're getting up there in age, bro. They might be forgetting that it's public. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> just just sending out hits on all of America. <laughs> well, they basically are already with the fucking poison they put in our food, our water, the fucking sky, everything else. So. Inflation never drops. It only contracts a slow burn instead of the current wildfire. Exactly. So you're only buying yourself time. And again, that's why it pays to be a prepper. Buy it cheap and stack it deep. It's never going to be as cheap as it is tomorrow as it is today. And even if it is, then buy some more and you're cost averaging. So again, for real, you should have been preparing yourself for these things. Just again. If you're a shooter, even if you don't think the world's going to end, if you shoot, you should have more than the couple of magazines that came with your fucking gun. Because maybe you want to not reload at the range as much, especially if it's pay by yeah. the hour. Maybe you don't want to fucking, you know, you want to go shoot competition. You can't fucking shoot competition if you only got two mags with the gun or whatever. Like, it's it's just simple shit. What are you laughing at, though? What happened? Fucking Jack Bauer also thinks that Joe banned bump stocks. That's crazy. He might be trolling. <laughs> I don't know that he is. Joe Biden is Obama's puppet as well. Listen, everybody keeps saying this about it. Why do you guys hate Obama more than you hate fucking Biden? And it's all Obama. Obama's pulling the strings behind the fucking. They're all the same thing, dude. All these people are just the figureheads. They're all just puppets that the people that are actually pulling the strings, you'll never see their face. You'll never hear their name. They're fucking crawling around in tunnels right now under the fucking New York City, dude. That's what the fuck's going on. Um but yeah, dude, it, it's it's nuts, man. You can't trust any of these motherfuckers. None of these motherfuckers are better than the next motherfucker. And it's on us. It has always been on us. We the people. And we did it once before, per how the history books read. And then we let it slip through our grasp once again. And now we are here. So realistically, as unfortunate as it may seem, that perhaps could be the only, and they're pushing for it. That's what they want. They're dropping movies about it, getting everybody hyped, planting that seed. It's predictive programming because, again, when it actually happens in real life, it'll seem more normal. People will go along with it more. It's just it's crazy, dude. The fucking we are living in the Matrix, dude. Like, I'm just waiting to be unplugged any day now. But, yeah. Get over Obama. I'm, com 
I'm comparing Trump to Joe, lost bump stocks with Joe, was lost private sales, more red flags. We have red flag laws under Trump. We had yep. him saying he doesn't like suppressors. We had the bump stock ban, which, again, is not just the bump stock ban. It's any rate increasing device, which has, again, affected the FRTs, the, the, the wide open triggers, the this, that, and the third. I'm surprised they haven't fucking clapped off on binaries yet. Um, then on top of that, it's fucking not just the rate increasing devices because the way that the bill was pushed through – uh, or law or mandate or whatever, because it's not even a law. It's just ATF says so. It's a regulation that is bullshit because they just came up with it and they have no power to do so, but people just give them the power to do so, I guess. Um, Including Trump. Yeah, exactly. He told them to do it. Yep, yep. So it's just, it's all ass backwards, dude. There is no good politician other than Forest Mommy. Forest Mommy runs for pres, I'm voting. But other than that, I don't want to hear it. Terrible Tactical 2028. Nah, it's not going to happen, dude. They'll assassinate me, dude. <laughs> so, again, this defeatist attitude. Oh, it's the lesser of two evils. You're still getting evil. There's nothing. There's not a right answer. There's not a, a wrong answer. There's just there is no answer because you're fucked either way, which means you should focus more on yourself, your family, your well-being, your health, your preparedness your financial situations, whatever it is, like focus on the shit that you can directly affect. Fuck worrying about a political system that they got you so wrapped up. Oh, we're listening to fucking WBBM every morning to hear the fucking latest fucking talking points and this, that, and the third. Fuck that shit, dude. Who fucking cares, dude? Because no matter what, if you live your life as constitutionally as you feel comfortable, like you're supposed to as a free fucking man or woman in this country, their laws don't apply to you. Because they're all repugnant to the Constitution, which means it's your civic duty to disobey them. So if you're a good American, you will. And then it doesn't matter. So it is what it is. Not financial or legal advice, but again, live free. Die free. Don't live and die as a slave. Right? Slavery is bad. Everybody agrees on that, right? Everything's fucking bad. It's terrible. We need reparations and shit. Everybody in this country these days is a fucking slave, no matter what color you are. And it's gross. Yeah. I'm just saying lesser two evils. Again, you're still evil, though. But yeah, lesser of two evils is an oxymoron. It's still evil. Choose your destructor. Okay, A-dubs is just fucking, what are you? Uh, what's that guy that does the puppets? Jeff Dunham. He's Jeff dunham right me right now. What is normal these days? We normal we didn't do that. No. Mainstream, lamestream media and the government did that and we accepted it. And again, not me, not him, not a lot of y'all out there. And again, I got no problem with whoever the fuck people are. You fucking be as weird as you want behind closed doors. You know, you're you're held accountable for the things you do. It, no sweat off my dick. So I'm not worried about it. Uh, and again, like I always say, I can't expect you to be cool with me wanting guns if I'm not cool with you wanting to be gay or whatever, you know, whatever. The fuck. Like there are certain lines like your ass. If you're a dude, you're going to the dude's bathroom, yep. in my opinion. But yep. um, yeah, shit like that. You want to be gay. You want to get married. Fucking whatever. The fucking marriage is a fucking government scam nowadays anyway, dude. If you want to be just as miserable as everybody else. And fucking get half your shit taken, you know, because these people, they like all these people have mental problems. So you think you're going to fucking marry somebody and live with them in the same household for the rest of your life. And you guys are both nuts. Have at it, <laughs> you know, have fun. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Fucking people, people are nuts. I'm pretty sure a 180 page bill banning private sales will be worse. So this is the thing, though. What are they banning? Because if you want to privately sell somebody a firearm, you still could, regardless of what the law says. You still could do it. It does. It's not like there's a fucking invisible force field that fucking prevents you from handing them the gun and them handing you money. You still could do it. So, oh, that's illegal. But are you doing something wrong? Are you doing anything wrong? Do you have any? It's not like you're selling it to gangbangers, right? You're selling it to your little nephew. You're selling it to your neighbor. You're selling it to your buddy because you, you don't like the gun anymore. And he's always been looking for one. And now they're hard to get. Who fucking cares, dude? Again, you do what you want. Don't listen to me. But they can't stop you. They make you think they can, which makes you stop yourself. Stop stopping yourself from living free in this fucking country, which was entirely built on the premise of living free. 
That's why we're here now. They're words on paper, dude. They want to say, oh, the Constitution doesn't mean shit. That's just ink on paper. So the fuck are your bullshit man-made laws? My opinion. But yeah. You still got to stay educated and vote for the best that will uphold the Constitution. Otherwise, you'll wake up in a cunt like Illinois. Well, yeah, again, if the votes matter. If the votes matter, you can do that. That's an option. But who knows if they do? And maybe they do in some states, but not others. Maybe maybe it's only certain cities and, and towns that it works on, on a lower grassroots level. But on the state or federal level, it doesn't fucking matter and hasn't for some time. And how would you ever know? Do you just keep believing in the system that is blatantly set up to fail you and has each and every go around? <sighs> not me. Again, I'm not hating on people that do, but I think it's unbehooving of you to not realize that as a realistic option in this scenario or any scenario. If the government can find a way to fuck you, they will fuck you with an AIDS dick and a cactus and no lube. So fuck them back. You know, I mean, it's That's simple. Dude. Gay. That is gay. But the government is gay, so I guess that's the only option you have when dealing with them. So, but yeah, man, I don't fucking know. You guys are fucking crazy. All y'all are crazy. You guys are a bunch of domestic fucking tourists around here, dude. Yeah. You guys are just trying to see the cunt. I don't have one, unfortunately, so can't really show you. It's also ain't the platform for that anyways. Yeah. Damn, dude. Kevin is in the comment section <laughs> fucking roasting Kyle right now. That's in, fucked up. In what? In, his, in the latest yeah. USPSA vids, yeah. he comments, never seen a spare tire move that bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Kevin's out there hating, dude. Yeah. Although I will say, well, actually, I don't even know. Let's see where fucking... And I'm not even trying to talk shit, but you know I'm talking shit, dude. Because oh, Kyle Kyle was talking. He's like, dude, I got you on a couple of rounds, dude. A couple of a couple of matches. I keep wanting to call them raids. I don't know why I want to call them raids. <laughs> I know why I want to call them <laughs> raids, but the fucking... Yeah, <laughs> the fucking... <clears throat> I'm like, Kyle, listen, I love you, buddy, but it didn't happen, dude. You did not beat me on a single stage, dude. <laughs> He's like, no, dude, I definitely got you on like one or two, dude. The first one for sure, for sure. And he didn't. But <laughs> again, so out of 79 people, uh, I got 23 overall. And again, this is shooting against yeah. pro shooters, dudes with optics and lights and weights and magwells and fucking rifles and shit, PCCs. And I'm shooting an iron, iron sighted gun, given it's an STI 2011, but it's just iron sights. And I don't even run a magwell on it because I yeah. like to keep it somewhat realistic. Um, so 23 out of 79. Let's see if I could just keep on scrolling, 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 scrolling. What? Scrolling, let's scroll, let's scroll. Where's this motherfucker at, dude? Where is this motherfucker at, dude? 62. 62 out of 70. <laughs> out of 79. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> I don't want to hear it, Kyle. He's like, he was trying to bet me. He was trying to bet me money. And he even made me second guess myself because, like, he's an RO. So, yeah. like, he, like from time to time we'll run the pad or the timer or whatever. So like he yeah. can see like the scores and the hits and all that. And so like, I thought maybe like he fucking, he did somehow fucking eke me on one stage and I knew it didn't, he didn't, but I was like, well, he's, he could see the pad. So maybe he knows something I don't. And he was like, Oh, you want to bet me? You want to bet me? I should have fucking bet his ass, dude. <laughs> fucking here's the water. This is Kyle getting blown out of it. Um, but yeah. Shout out to the homie Kyle, though. Kyle! Goddamn Jesus. But yeah, dude, good times, dude. Good times. You should look... So, like, obviously you're going to have your own range and be able to shoot pretty much yes. whenever and however and not have to worry about fucking range officers and other stupid people and whatever the fuck. But, like, where is, like, the closest like ranges like do they have indoor ranges is everything outdoors is there a place close by that you could actually go do the idpa or uspsa or something like range that that i've seen is in orlando and it's one of those like machine gun rental places oh you know? sick dude you should go do that but uh there's probably an outdoor super range expense. that's like 
15 minutes down the road from me. It's state owned. So it's like you just pull up. It's like a Jasper Pulaski kind of deal. No, you still got to <sighs> pay to get in and everything. But uh, it seems almost like... You uh, should just bring them a bill of your taxes. Yeah. It seems like the... Uh, almost like... What should we call it? The one skeet range we went to. Ow, ski ski, motherfucker! Where they have the different areas set up for right. plays and then archery and everything like that. But they got, you know, you got to pay to get in in the first place. It's like 15 bucks per person. That's not bad. But then it's like all day and they have everything from archer ranges, clay ranges, fucking 200, I think, yard rifle range, pistol ranges, stuff like that. That's pretty decent. Pretty decent, indeed. But it's also where just about anybody who doesn't have the land to shoot goes. Right. So. You get all the miscreants and the ne'er do wells over there. Yeah. So I don't know. You don't want that. You know. <sighs> what are we seeing here? Even other states like Kentucky and Tennessee are doing the same. What are we talking about? Every state is trying to do something, even like Virginia. Yeah, they're, we're getting fucked from every – because nobody fucking wants to do nothing, dude. And they get away with it in one state. They start in the fucking Democrat-controlled fucking places, which is pretty much everywhere in this country. Um, and then they're, hey, well, we're going to fucking do this. And then they're importing all these fucking illegals and fucking all the fucking libs are moving from California to Texas and Tennessee and all this other thing. And so it's – again, when people sit idly by – and you don't stand for anything, you'll fall for everything. And you don't stand up, you don't say no, you don't oppose it, you don't do anything to change it yourself. You just expect the politicians, which is the government, no matter who the politician is, to fix it for you when they have no vested interest in your success or freedoms in the least bit. In fact, it's the opposite. And you only show up to vote, but in the meantime, you're not doing anything actively to protest or to call, to write, to, to civilly disobey, to encourage other people to do all those things themselves and this and that, like, it, which a lot of people are, a lot of people do. And, you know, that's all well and good. I'm one of them. But there, what, what's the difference, dude? What's, what's the difference? How do you think that anything is going to work out for you if you, you can only trust yourself these days and uh, you get in what you, you get out what you put in, you reap what you sow. So if you're not doing anything and you're just expecting to vote somebody in when the votes clearly don't even count and the people don't even give a damn about you and you think that's going to be your saving grace, it's unbehooving. Unbehooving as fuck, I would say. Terribly moved to West Virginia, live in Barbersville, motherfucker. I don't get a good haircut there, dude. Move till it moves to your... Yeah, so that's the thing, dude. You can't... Yeah. I say that all the time. Like, you can't run from it. Like, it, you're just buying yourself time because eventually it will be everywhere. Now, some states might hold out quite a bit longer than others, but Texas is already purple. Arizona's already purple. Fucking, you know, Tennessee is going to be purple before you know it. Fucking Indiana is going to be purple before you know it. Fucking a lot of these places don't count too, too much as far as the, the votes are concerned anywhere. Anyway, and again, the votes don't really matter to begin with the way I see it. So it's all just a bunch of compiled bullshit you have to sort through to figure out what's really going on and they expect most people aren't going to because most people are fucking lazy and complacent which they are because they've been accustomed to doing so they've been accustomed to fucking turning the light switch on and the lights come on and fucking having air conditioning and fucking heat and fucking delivery food at the click of a button and fucking amazon next door or next day fucking you know, whatever you want and fucking you don't even have to go to the grocery store anymore and fucking talk to human beings. You fuck. And when you do, you go through the fucking self checkout line anyway. So then there's going to be less and less actual humans. And then there's going to be nothing but fucking Skynet, dude. You guys are asking for it. You're going to fucking get it. One could argue you already have. So. But yeah. TT, how come you go to I Golden, Illinois? God knows there. Well, I'm not going this year. It's in four days and I'm done going until they make any type of legit change. Or if people show up this time, I might go next year. But then again, it would only be because of the shit that's going on. Because again, it, let's say, hypothetically speaking, this is not going to happen whatsoever. But let's say we get fucking 10, 20,000 people at iGold this year because of all the drastic, crazy shit that has taken place as far as the Second Amendment is concerned in Illinois. 
and then the, the Supreme Court or whoever, we get a good ruling and shit goes back to normal. We're back to a thousand people tops the next year. They're fair weather fans. They only show up when they think it counts. And by that time, it's too late. It's no days off. So instead, I'm going to keep doing the shit that I do to fight for the Second Amendment and expand the Second Amendment and exercise my Second Amendment and encourage other people to do the same um, best way I can. And I think that is far more worth my time than going and beating my little dick in a waiting room with a politician that is on lunch every time I go to speak to him. So, you know, plus, again, the ISRA doesn't do fuck. They're a bunch of fuds. They're fucking, you know, there's, there's good organizations like Gun Saves Lives or Save Lives or Save Life or what I always forget exactly what it is. Like, uh, shout out to the homie Nick and like shit like that. Like, and they're in bed with the ISRA and I'm sure the NRA and everybody else and whatever. But, you know, it is what it is. But they're just not like we need FPC motherfuckers. We need GOA motherfuckers. We need Nagger motherfuckers. We need, you know, Second Amendment Foundation motherfuckers. We need, you know, like ISRA is bullshit in today's day and age. And it's gross. It's fucking gross. So they got to fix their shit, dude. And I mean, I don't, they would never talk to me. They would never take me seriously, but I could have them fucking at least appealing to the fucking modern populace of firearm owners that would potentially increase their revenue, which would then further allow them if they wanted to, which they should want to, because that's their, they should want to work themselves out of a job. So I don't know, dude, I don't fucking know, but they're fucking up. They're only on FUD shit. They only care about pellet guns and muzzle loaders. There's not a, a single fucking, can you pull up the ISRA website right now and let's see how fucking broad and bold in the fucking, the fuddery is, dude. I should call these motherfuckers. Give them a piece of my mind, dude, I tell you what. Indiana is pretty red. We have pretty good small towns around here. Okay, so this is the ISRA, Illinois State Rifle Association website. Our three full-time lobbyists are always working when the General Assembly is in session. How come so they, they're not working when they're out of session? I feel like there could still be a lot of work to be done even when they're out of session. So this is the homepage. Okay. Shout out to Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Coops, dude. An unarmed man can only flee from evil, and evil is not overcome by fleeing from it. Okay. It's a very cookie-cutter quote. Okay. This is a black rifle, but there's no mag in it. It's being shot from a bench. And... Uh, then we've got a Hollywood person, Clint Eastwood. Okay, not really. This isn't even really a truly pro-gun comment that they're quoting. That quote. Yeah. That's this. Congratulations. That, yeah. You only trust yourself with a firearm. Right. And then okay, we got fucking bunch of old dudes laying prone, shooting bolt, bolt guns down. and shit. Okay. Then there's no such thing as a good gun. There's no such thing as a bad gun. A gun in the hands of a bad man is a very dangerous thing. A gun in the hands of a good person is no danger to anyone. Okay. All right. 1911. Love the old 1911. But still, this is, in most people's mind, more fud shit. But Masada Ayub, a goat, but also a fud. Um, strict gun laws are about as effective as strict drug laws. Okay. A bunch of random quotes from random people. Okay. More fud shit. More old dudes, middle-aged dudes with M1 Garands, laying prone. Okay. There's one dude with a... Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, there you go. 20-inch gun. You can see the barrel. Yeah, dude. Probably shooting irons. <laughs> yep, 100%. That's service rifle. That looks like a service rifle yeah. match they're shooting. Um, which is cool. They do competition shit and whatever. Okay, here, pellet, pellet gun. gun. Indoor pellet gun league, it looks like 10 yards, and that gun should definitely be capable at 100 from what it looks like. And muzzle loaders. Here we go, folks. This is what we're all about here. Fucking pathetic, dude. Yep. At least they have eye gold. It's the first thing you see on the, the page. For once, eye gold. how for long has it been? Time. How every year, dude? I've fucking bitched and moaned about that. You have to scroll and click and be subscribed to the fucking newsletter. Yep. 
and get the email just to go check the calendar and see and and look and they're too worried about selling you a bunch of bullshit yeah. merch fucking printed on some chinese products yeah. no dude fucking no dude march on the capitol reassemble in the capitol Get the fuck out of here, dude. It's all for show, dude. They're not really doing nothing. None of these dudes are fucking talking to you, dude. I they, think out of spending, all the years I went there, I got in to talk to my dude like once or twice. They want to spend an hour and 25 minutes at the Capitol. Yeah. But not even that. An hour and 25 minutes to march to the Capitol, then go in and supposedly speak to your representatives. Yeah, which nobody, half the people don't even do that. Begin leaving. Half the people don't even do that. They fucking drive down there. A lot of them are probably somewhat local. And then they go to the little assembly in the fucking theater. Or the whatever you call it. The stadium. And then they march down to the Capitol. They get their photo ops. You listen to the speech at the the steps. And then before you even go into the building, half the crowd fucking leaves. Yep. What was the purpose, dude? Of going there, the whole purpose is to fucking lobby with your representatives, not fucking beat everybody's dick in a circle jerk talking about, oh, we're going to get them. No, go get them. Yep. <sighs> I don't get it, dude. I do not fucking get it. Makes it. no sense. Boils like, my blood. All the times we've been there, I don't think we've once made for the uh, closing assembly in the rotunda. No, never once. Not <laughs> once. <laughs> they're cleaning up Every the chairs when we get back, dude, because we actually want to fucking go get those motherfuckers. The and shit. <sighs> they move them every time. It's never yeah, the same no, place. it really is not, dude. It really is not. But like, what the fuck? Second thing, yeah, it's also I well, At least they seem to be trying. What is their mission? What is it? Tell them what camera. their mission is. Tell me what their mission their is mission. here. Ice Ray supports the <sighs> firearm owners with education, training, litigation, and legislation to protect your Second Amendment rights. As we stand at the threshold of our second century, we continue to promote marksmanship and gun safety. At the same time, our role is widening beyond our. F- Founders' wildest dreams. Politicians whose actions over 200 years ago formed us for the pr- protection of the United States now betray us and the ideals that made this country great. Hunters are attacked by animal rights activists and the law protects the activists. Public hunting lands purchased by special taxes imposed on hunters are now closed to those same hunters. Mayors and other politicians whose policies have caused segments of our society to go out of control blame gun owners for their failures. Radical anti-gun organizations partnering with major news media to seek make gun ownership, sports shooting, hunting, collecting, and self-defense illegal or impossible. Read more about ISRA. Yeah. Where's the pictures of dudes with fucking nods on and full kit that are just regular silly villains, not military or law enforcement guys out on the range training? Because supposedly they have a tactical range back there at the ISRA range, but I don't see any fucking pictures of nobody getting tactical in that motherfucker. So they're just, it's a. Sure. What you got for me? This is how you load a pellet gun. A gun in sight. Yeah. No, fucking no kit. Dirty dudes. Everybody no is gun, wearing khakis, though. Carrier. There's khakis, it's though. Like, they have khakis. Yeah, yeah, They're close. They're tactical khakis, bro. Tactical khakis, dude. Yeah, the tac khakis, dude. Handgun and workout level one. You can go get your hand. That's hand all they got? Workout. Yeah, level they're like, this is... Three. You got to put the bullets in this way. And then you fucking rack the slide. And then you fucking make sure your finger's off the trigger now. And there's still people holding fucking pistols like this with their thumb behind the ship about to cut themselves on the yeah. slide. Dude. They got medical training classes. Or Which something. consists of what? Putting bitch stickers on people? Endorsed by the following professional organizations, whatever. Indiana SWAT Officers Association, of course. Yeah. It's provided by the Illinois Department of Health. One day training course focused on providing firearms. Illinois Department of Health. That's got to be a pretty low standard, dude. Yeah. To develop emergency medical action plans and how to render immediate medical aid to students injured in training. High and tight, dude. Tourniquet around the neck. It's not your problem no more. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You know? Unless you're David Carradine, then you like that shit. But, uh, yeah, dude. The fucking... It's just... It's crazy to me. It's absolutely crazy to me because, like... Again, at the time when they were one of the biggest contributing factors to getting concealed carry in the state of Illinois, which is still fucked because you have to pay however much money a two-day class is, which you shouldn't have to take a class to exercise your rights. Again, that makes it a privilege. You shouldn't have to have a permit, a license, and a fee because that makes it a privilege. Murdoch versus Penn Supreme Court case clearly states that that is unjust. It is not constitutional um 
yet it happens here and in many other states. Um, you have to have a FOID card to begin with just to own a gun. But I guess now not to keep one in your home because of the, the old lady or whatever, which I guess is a win to an extent. But at the same time, how are you going to get the gun or whatever? Buy a 3D printer. Get a P80. Yeah. Um, but the fucking, which that's illegal in Illinois now. The fuck is, So, I mean, it, and again, who fucking cares, dude? They let these fucking bangers on the south side with switches on their glizzies all day, every day, and let them out the next day. Because they're just adding to the statistics that they want to be able to be like, hey, this is why we're tyrannizing your asses. Because, oh, the crime, even though you're a good law-abiding citizen and would never do anything like this, you're the one getting punished. Because you think the fuck the criminals, by definition, are ones who do not obey the law. So do you fucking think for one goddamn second that having laws on the books is stopping the criminals? That is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. Yep. So... Laws only affect the law abiding and we're not the problem to begin with. So stop obeying unconstitutional, unjust laws. Live as constitutionally as you feel comfortable. And remember, again, it is your civic duty to disobey tyranny in this country, dude, at every front. And yes, perhaps one day will that bring consequences for you to bear? Sure. But the ones you're going to bear for not living freely and for going along with the system that is set up to fail you each and every time, and bowing down to the jackbooted thugs and the tyrants and the powers that should not be, those consequences are far worse, in my opinion. But either way, you know, maybe if you read a history book once in a while, but they're rewriting those every single day, you know, and, and the victors are the ones who write them to begin with. So we don't even really know what history happened, I suppose. Um, Got to get ourselves a hot tub time machine or something. But yeah. Thomas Mag is arguing for us against the state to destroy the state's arguments to keep the FOID Act. The FOID card is on the verge of being destroyed. We'll see how it goes. I don't know that we could say it's on the verge of being destroyed. Um, I was trying to organize a movement, fire to the FOID, years ago at iGold, where we bring a bunch of 55-gallon drums and burn our FOID cards in front of the fucking Capitol, and everybody fucking just lives their life, dude. But nobody wanted to do it because it would only work if there was literally majority of gun owners in Illinois because then, yes, if you burned your FOID card, how are you going to buy a gun? How are you going to buy ammo? Whatever. So uh, I get it, but it's it's about sending a message, dude. What did what did the Joker say, or was it Bane? It's it's not. It's about sending a message. But yeah, it's Joker. Yeah. So I mean, and that's the thing, dude. Is like you can't comply your way out of tyranny, and you can't vote your way out of it either. We're here. We got to deal with it. And this is not the way to deal with it. Like we're donating money to these organizations that aren't doing shit all about fuck showing up to the little rah, rah, shish, kumba rallies when you're not really doing nothing. Waiting entire four year segments to vote your guy in because it was robbed last time. You think it's not going to be robbed this time. None of those are valid options. None of those are going to be the fix for this country. The fix for this country lies within us. We the people, the idea, the moral foundation, the principles that this country was founded on, if that's what you believe in, then you are a coward for not standing up for them. The way I see it, no matter what the consequences are, because again, you're going to fucking bite your tongue. You're going to give up your guns. You're going to fucking do this, that, and the third, and just be a victim, not have an option, not have a choice, sit idly by while troops are quartered in your home. And rape your wives and your daughters. And you can't do shit about it. Or they kill you. Kill them first. You know. Kill them with kindness. To make it politically correct. That's what I call my 50 cal kindness. But uh. Yeah. It's just you know. All jokes aside. Like they, it's not a joke though. Like if we're actually experiencing tyranny. Which I think we have been in many levels. In many forms. For many years. Um. That, again, nobody likes talking about it. That is the true purpose of the Second Amendment. I was watching the Travis Haley podcast, or it was actually a job. Believe it or not, the only reason I watched it, because Travis Haley was a guest, and they were going to be talking about Najaf and different shit like that. And um, it was a John Lovell podcast. It just came out, I think, a few days ago, him and Travis Haley, and I was watching it. And I think it was actually John that said it was Haley or John, but I remember being surprised because I'm pretty sure it was John that said the whole purpose of the second amendment is for shooting tyrants. 
And like, it, that's the most like blatant and bolden and across the board that I've ever heard him speak like that. Cause usually he's very cookie cutter friend, you know, friend, family friendly and fucking whatever. Yeah. And, um, More that is what it is. No, nobody wants to fucking, nobody wants to talk about it, dude. Cause it's a grim, that would be a grim existence and it would not work out well for a lot of people on both sides. But if that's what it takes and that's what it took back in the day, then that is what it is. Because again, it wouldn't have gotten to that point if people had moral structure, had fucking a brain to use and think for themselves. Everybody's got a brain, but nobody uses it anymore. If somebody stood up at the beginning of all this shit and said, no, we're not dealing with that. That's not how shit flies around here and put a stop to it. Instead of just sitting idly by, ah, it doesn't affect me. Ah, I don't care. Ah, it's just a little bit of infringement. Again, death by a thousand paper cuts and everybody's bleeding the fuck out. Nobody even realizes it, dude. You're the fucking lobster or the frog in the boiling water, but it's lukewarm right now. So you don't feel it until it's too late. So it's simple, dude. It's such a simple like idea that has been working the entire time throughout humanity, throughout existence. The Hegelian dialect, problem, reaction, solution. The government comes up with a problem, the people react to it, and then conveniently, every single time, the government has the solution. So everybody, oh, save us, big daddy government. They're not here to save you, dude. They're here to kill you because you're breathing their air, you're taking up their resources, you're living on their land. It is what it is. And if you don't like that, then do something about it or be prepared to do something about it when they bring that to your front door. Because they're gonna. And in a lot of ways, they already have. So, but yeah. TT pull up Sadek. This is the group we need to be supporting. I don't know if you could pull that up, Scales. I don't know. Second Amendment Defense and Education Co- Coalition. So I heard you earlier say Tom Vandermeid, fucking of Freedom Shills. Um, is working with him. I don't. I can't fucking stand that guy either. That guy's a fucking board of members. That guy's a fucking fud cuck and a half. So he ain't got my vote, but yeah. So what is this? This is Sadek. (sighs) This looks like a really professional website, dude. Oh yeah, they're really getting off the ground with this one. I mean, this this is their initial page. Okay, okay, a bunch of stock photos, sick. Love it. That's a PSA with a fucking tack pack grip on it. Sick. (coughs) Who are they, dude? (coughs) SADC was founded to support those who are defending the constitution protected civil rights of all Americans in the court system with a particular focus on the right to bear arms as expressly provided in the Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution and to educate the public about the importance of such rights and how to preserve and defend those rights. So, I'll give it to him. It sounds better than what ISRA got to say about it. But, but who they really are is Eric Callis, a firearm instructor, educator, technologist, and competitive shooter who has been the president of the largest private gun club in Illinois for the past four years. So what is that, Todd Waterman? Vandermeid, former yeah, NRA Waterman. contract lobbyist. <coughs> Brian O'Neill, Illinois licensed attorney who has served on and represented numerous nonprofit organizations. And Peter Alexopoulos, a business executive, comp- comp- competition shooter, and firearms instructor who keeps a close pulse of the firearms training industry. That's who they are. Yeah. But yeah, Todd Vandermeid, fuck, dude. Don't judge a book by its cover. Todd knows what the hell he's doing in his attorneys. Okay, so I'm judging by his actions. Yeah, I'm judging again. Actions speak louder than words, and he's on the internet, just fiending for super chats that everybody's so fucking. Which I could give a fuck less. I tell people not to give me money. He does live streams just just like Guns and Grifters and all those other fucking fucks. Um, they do that shit just so they can't. What has he really done? What has he really my, done? My biggest, I, I, I called it quits on that dude when he couldn't be asked to fucking mention right. my gold for right. 15 seconds in one right. of his videos. Because right. He's not going. Yeah, he's tell him about that. other plans. Tell him about that. And he'll mention that in a comment that he's not going. Yeah. But he won't take 15, 30 seconds into yeah. one of his videos to mention yeah. that he even existed. Yeah. That's what it, that's where it started for me as well. Because I believe I was the one that originally left a comment questioning him as to why. He wouldn't talk about it. And then on top of that, not only that, the fucking he's he's definitely a FUD. 
I don't give a fuck about his prior military service or that he shoots three gun at Aurora Sportsman's Club or fucking whatever the fuck. He's on there talking about shit that doesn't matter about how, oh, well, I got gun parts in my lightsaber. So is that now an assault weapon? Shut the fuck up, dude. Shut the fuck up. That's the fucking uh, queerest shit I've ever fucking heard. Dude. Oh, this 22. This. Yeah, this, this, this is illegal. Is this illegal is illegal. Now. Oh, Make this sure you ban this. Illegal now. Yeah. Oh, this is illegal now. Yeah. Oh, look at this. This could be construed as illegal now. <laughs> right. It's, like, yeah. that's. Yeah, he's just giving them ideas at that point, you know. So you buy, you go all by all means, fucking support that guy. But fuck that guy, in my opinion, dude. He's a fucking shill. He's a fraud. He's fucking just getting a bunch of money off the YouTube shit. He's got a bunch of clout that I don't think he deserves, and I don't think he's really truly. I bet his guns are registered. Is what I'm gonna say. That's what I'm gonna say. I bet he has registered guns. And so, how could you be a true Second Amendment supporter with registered guns? Oh, I'm just following the law. We're going to figure this out in the courts. Go fuck yourself, dude. So. Why don't you? I did. I did. That's how we got here to begin with. That's why I yeah. don't like the motherfucker. Yeah. Is precisely. because I tried. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> he's not a fuck. He's a fuck, dude. Yeah. He's a fuck. Yeah. He's breaking the laws, bullshit, and design the language. No, he's not. He's not doing fuck. I've seen his fucking, I've seen several of his fucking court testimonies. I've watched a lot of his videos and fucking, he's not talking about shit. He's fucking very, very boomerly memeing. And he's, he talks more about fucking, oh, I was in the fucking dozer at fucking Aurora Sportsman's Club fixing the berms and shit than he does fucking encouraging people to fucking not comply to tyranny. So go fuck that dude. Fuck that dude. But yeah. If that's his cred. I mean, I I built a range in my backyard too. Right, so, right, you know, dude. You're doing you do him. you're doing so much for the Second Amendment because of that, dude. <clears throat> but yeah, it, it's just it's absurd, dude. And I'm not even trying to be a hater, dude. And it's not I don't give a fuck. Like I, I'm not like hating to hate. I'm and I'm not even hating. I'm just disliking because he's not who everybody thinks he is and all these people that follow him and cuck to him and send him hundreds of dollars in super chats and fuck it again. What is, what is he doing? Where is that? You're not, that money's not going to the organization, dude, that go, that's going in his pocket. He's buying guns. He's buying ammo. He's fucking paying bills. He's doing whatever with that money. It's not like that money is going to the fight, dude. I almost guarantee it. Um, but I don't know for sure. So I can't say, but either way, like the fucking, it's just, it's all fake bullshit, dude. It's all fake bullshit, dude. He's, he's got a name for himself because he knows the right people. And uh, he's just kind of a clown, in my opinion. I, he's very hypocritical in a lot of ways. Because, um, again, the, the same thing, dude. For iGold, we're trying to pump everybody up. Every, this, uh, this was before. This was before it went into law, right? Or was it was it just yeah, after? This, this was just after. No, okay. this, no, I think this was before it was actually enacted. It was, like, actually put into law a week later. Or something like that. Yeah. Some shit like that. Or like a few yeah. days even. And maybe if he's got so much pull and clout and power and this, that, and the, again, even if he wasn't going, which, again, if he's such a staunch Second Amendment supporter, you're going to fuck, you're, you got to go, oh, I got to go hop in the dozer and fix some more three gun matches at fucking Aurora before I can't fight for the Second Amendment. I'm going to be in the dozer. I'm going to be in the, I'm in, I'm over here dozing off in the dozer. Like, the fact is you couldn't even mention it in your videos. You should have been mentioning it for months. I'm sure you're well aware. I'm sure you work with these ISRA people on a regular basis mm -hmm. if you're really in the courtrooms and doing this. former and... NRA lobbyist. Apparently. Right, dude. Yeah. And again, he says that as like it's a brag, dude. And, and, but like, why it's not. I don't That's know. my big question I want answered. Why former? Well, he, he, I'm sure he would say, oh, well, they were not being Second Amendment, pro-Second Amendment, so I left because I, I actually care about the Second Amendment. But again, what are, you, what are you doing, dude? What are you actually doing that you're not – that? because, again, all this stuff, people – everybody has these little non-taxable – organizations and they're doing this and they're doing that. Where does that money really go? I'd like to see the fucking spreadsheets. I'd like to see the books, you know, are they actually doing stuff? Because how has it been? This is some of the most blatantly unconstitutional legislation that's ever been passed. We are currently worse than California in Illinois, as far as our gun control, worse than California, dude. And it's been over a year coming up on two years in a little bit here what what have they been doing where is this money gone what is it really getting spent on or are we getting armani suits and lear jets like wayne lapierre 
You know, are we using the money to go fucking fund more three gun ranges at Aurora Sportsman's Club? Are we uh, are we upgrading the old dozers? You know, are we getting the new fucking whatever the hell's Bobcats and shit. I don't even know who fucking makes them, dude. Probably not Bobcat. Bobcat's too small. Do Bob, does Bobcat make dozers like big ones? I mean, yeah. Like huge yeah. ones though, like yeah. industrial size. Okay, sure. What's the other company though? There's another company that's fucking Cat. super. Catacool. No, yeah, that. But then there's yeah. another one. I think it might be foreign. It's got a weird name. There's a bunch. Uh, of yeah. Either way, the fucking does John Deere still make that shit? John Deere still makes that shit, don't they? Then more so farm equipment, but big industrial shit. Um, Oh, okay, so you're not on the part of the Supreme Court's ruling of New York Rifle and Pistol Association for Bruin? Yeah, dude, but what does that even matter? What is it? What does Bruin even matter if everybody just disregards it and the Supreme Court doesn't hold them accountable? They're the Supreme Court, dude. They, what, what is, do they just wear, like, stupid-ass fucking fanny packs across their chest? Because that's about as supreme as they're acting. Because they, they have no power. They got no clout. They got no respect. Nobody's listening to them in all these fucking states and towns and cities that are going against it. That should have been it. Text history tradition, dude. And there is no backing for any of the gun control that we have currently from the text history and tradition. And the findings were brewing. Like, all gun control should be gone at this point. But it's not. So what does that ruling have anything to do with it? Amy Coney Barrett is a plant, dude. She has had several times that she had the option. She's supposedly pro Second Amendment. She's supposedly a real constitutionalist to one extent or another. And she had several opportunities to fix this on her own and then chose not to and then chose to bring it before a three judge panel of the court and they decided not to do anything. And then now where is it? Are they ever going to take it up? Because they could also choose not to. Why would you do something like Bruin? And then not, because realistically, after Bruin, you should need to take up another case. But since the all these people and governments and places and states Bleh. and towns and cities or whatever that are not obeying the supreme law of the land, which is the Constitution, and then furthermore, the Supreme Court ruling on the matter and going against that on top of it, they're double dog daring you and you ain't doing shit about it. These people are not being dethroned and kicked out of office or arrested or whatever. What does that matter? What, what does the ruling even matter if nobody listens? It's nothing. So, yeah, I, I don't know what the argument is. I mean, how could you? There should be no gun control, period. Yeah, Kamatsu, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah that's what it is. The kill does. Yeah, fuck yeah. Shout out to the kill does. <sighs> Maybe you should email, call, and contact the federal judiciary, Jim Jordan, and correct these corrupt judges, including the Dude, I get in contact with a lot of these motherfuckers on a regular basis. And I will admit, I haven't been as pertinent about it as of late. I still do from time to time. But instead of like once or twice a week, it's like maybe been once or twice a month. Because A, I've been busy. There's shit going on. And then C, well, I don't know how I skip straight to C. <laughs> B... So circle back to B. Right. We just, oh, yeah. I'm Jen Saki and this motherfucker. Yeah. We'll circle back to that. Um, yeah. I just, there's just, it, it, again, much like, and it's, I'm not trying, I hate the idea of taking a defeatist attitude because I'm the motherfucker of anybody that will purely out of spite continue down the path and, and double down, you know, at against all odds type of thing. Like, and that's not a stroke of my own dick. It's just like, fuck you, no, dude. We're not playing those games. We're not, I'm not giving you what you want, even if it kills me, because that's just, you're not winning. Your evil will not win if I have something to say about it. So, and that's how everybody should think about it, dude. This has always been good versus evil. This is not Republicans versus Democrats. It's not, it's just good and evil. And that comes in all shapes and sizes on both sides of the aisle. So, I don't know, man. I don't fucking know, dude. It's fucking, it's just, it's reckless. It's reckless how people just abandon their freedoms so easily and sit idly by and expect other people to clean up the mess that they left by being weak men and creating hard times and then expecting weak men that present themselves as strong men to fix the future for them. 
it's scary, dude. It's really fucking scary, dude. But yeah, I don't know. I don't trust that fucking freedom steal motherfucker. I don't think he's really pro two A. I think he's he's. A, I would put him in the gun community, not the gun culture. Yeah. I would say Bishop on Air is fucking more gun culture than fucking Todd Vandermine. <laughs> He'll do nothing. It's up to you. What? Doing something is better than doing. Yes, a hundred percent. But if you're investing, you have to be doing the right something though. Because if you're fucking screaming into the fucking Grand Canyon, all of your woes, who hears you? Other than the rocks, right? So you have to be efficient in what you're doing in the fight. But simply, so that's not, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. That's a true statement. Something, doing something is always better than doing nothing. If for nothing less, just the intention of you trying to do something, even if it's the wrong thing. But if you are doing the wrong thing or the thing that is getting you nowhere, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. So if, are you not wasting your time? Should you not be focusing your efforts somewhere more beneficial? So it all depends, but you know, again, situation dictates the tactics, but yeah, I, you know, my take on it, at least I'm a nothing, nobody from nowhere. I don't know shit about fuck. This is just me talking freely. We're all cool. We're all friends. We're all like-minded individuals for the most part, and we're free to disagree, but I really don't think that we can vote this away. I really don't because what, what the fuck did, how? How? How do we stop them from rigging it? How do we get the Supreme Court to hear a case? How do we stop the tyrants from enforcing these laws? Like, I mean, there's a few ways that nobody wants to talk about. And of course, should at always be an absolute last resort. But again, the true purpose of the Second Amendment is for instances like that. If some crazy tyrannical shit is going down and everything that has been taking place in the last several years is building up to some crazy tyrannical shit going down. So I would be prepared for that in every way you can be. But thinking that we're going to use paper and pen to solve this the way that, I mean, I hope so. And I, I believe it to be possible if the system is righteous, which it's not. If it so, all works out the way it's supposed to. If it all worked out the way it's supposed to, we would never be here to begin with. Nope. So, you know, again, if voting mattered, it would be illegal. If fucking this, that, and third, it's all just shit to get us distracted, get us bickering and debating back and forth. Like, we just spent fucking an hour and a half talking about politics that really, in the grand scheme of things, does not affect free Americans if they live constitutionally comfortable. We could have took that time talking about good preps and medical information and how to make a garden and what berries you could eat and fuck whatever that and informing people and educating people to be more self-sustaining, more self-sufficient so they can be more independent of a system that is set up to fail them. But we're sitting here like a bunch of idiots talking about the same shit everybody else is talking about because it's the divide. It's, it's across the aisle. It's that's, that's how they get you every time. And even being self-aware of that, we're still doing it. Yep. So you know, we'll be back again next week to do it again. 830 Central Standard Time. <clears throat> I do have to pee, so I'll be right back. For sure. <laughs> Problem is, I don't know what the fuck to talk about at this point. Pretty much everything's been said. So I'm just going to sit here in awkward silence or awkward mumblings like I normally do. Pretend that I actually have something to say. There's nobody else in the comments to talk to. There's nobody else commenting other than Jack Bauer. I think he might still be around. Talking about them Cummins engines. Good old Indiana diesel. <clears throat> I didn't even know they were made in fucking Indiana if they are. It's kind of cool. But. I don't even know. I don't even know what to think of all this shit. Try to get your boys on the Mini 14 bandwagon to build a new boog loadout. Just need a van. <laughs> I, don't, I just, I just, I'm not sure it's the strat. You know, 
proprietary mags and all that. I'm pretty sure it's proprietary. I don't know. I've never had one, never shot one. So, wouldn't know nothing about it. But, I didn't know a guy who got one. It was one of his dream guns because of the A-Team. I never even watched any of the movies, so. No nostalgia for me. No draw to it. I'd rather just have an AR. That is what it is. They're cool. They look cool. Just not worth it to me. Especially with the fucking prices now on them. Holy shit. Columbus, Indiana is where Cummins was founded and built over 100 years, years ago. That's pretty sick, man. Did not know. Never had a reason to research it either. <laughs> Never had a vehicle with a Cummins. Never drove a diesel even. Smush. That's cool. What did I miss? Nothing. Just me mumbling awkwardly into the camera. Sick, dude. Yeah. Sounds like every other time. Yeah, pretty much. Just the same shit, different day. <sighs> same shit, different turlet, and that motherfucker is clogged in this bitch, boy. Yeah. yeah. Tried to get you boys on the Mini 14 bandwagon to build the new Boog loadout. Just need a van, dude. <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, I'm listen, I'm not mad at the Mini 14. I'm just not spending $1,000 on one. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. You're right. You know? Right, which is even worse, dude. <laughs> I'd rather be mad. Fuck <laughs> yeah. it. Because, like, you're, you could have been. You know, yeah. they they are cool. The fucking Statesville still uses them for their prison guard rifles or something. Uh, and again, so I've talked about it before. Like sometimes, depending on the situation or the style of shooting or what kind of shooting you're going to be doing, um, you know, whether it's hunting or tactical stuff or whatever. Like, I, and even in some cases with like a tactical, like if I was actually using, like I got the Benelli M4 H2O with the pistol grip and all that shit. If I actually had to fight with it, I'd prefer that it had a Monte Carlo stock because yeah. it's easier to move the gun, feed the gun, you know, whatever it is, as opposed to having the, you know, so it's not always just cause like it's cool and tactical and pistol grip that it's even more effective in my opinion. In a lot of ways, it's more aesthetic than it is effective in some cases. So like, I'm not mad at the Monte Carlo stock of a Ruger mini 14. If I bought a Ruger mini 14, it'd be fucking wooden steel. I mean, I wouldn't mind the the Hogue one or the synthetic. It's whatever, but like, it's it's a nice handy rifle. It's just a five five six M one carbine. The way that I look at it, and if they were built better and more reliable, and the mags were less proprietary, like they could be proprietary. They could be Mini fourteen specific mags, but like they're really expensive compared to what you can get a P mag for an AR for. Plus, the AR is going to outshoot it out of a rest almost every time. Plus. It's way more modular and easy to bolt on whatever accessories you may need, which every fighting rifle needs a white light, iron sights, and a sling. And I think out of the box, you can put a sling on a Mini-14, yeah, and it does sure. have irons, of course. Yep. It's harder to mount optics, and good luck with your flashlight. Unless you get the tactical model, which is like basically a Tapco stock. Yep. So, And it's a polymer rail, so if you ever wanted to put a lamb on it, it sure as fuck ain't going to hold zero. So, you know, it's just, it's cool. I like the nostalgia. It's been in a lot of classic movies and, and shows and shit. And I would like to have one at some point, but I would not want to buy one used for 600. I'd want to buy a new one for 600 because otherwise I feel like I'm getting fucked. But yeah. Have you ever shot one? You ever like seriously no. looked at them? Never. Never been interested? No. Is it because it's a like FUD I, gun? Like or I what said it? originally, it's just like. For me, it's just a different AR, and I never watched any of the A Team movies to have the nostalgic effect well, of it. Show, that, that draw. I'm sure well, they there's made. also movies, right? Yeah, but it's but the I've show is seen, what it's all about. Well, I've never seen any of them, so I don't give a shit. <laughs> like it don't matter. <laughs> I love it when that. a plan comes together during the boot, makes everything well, work. See well, that that's funny cause I did, second kind of cool. That when I was building the sure. range. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just just the other day. If you're having issues with it, fucking leaning forward. So what was leaning like, forward? The whole fucking wall. Damn, dude. It was the leaning tower of pizza, dude. Which is kind of the plan, but also <laughs> it went a little further than we had expected it to. And so, what do you mean leaning, like leaning, like staggered? So like it's kind of like, like encompassing. 
at a f- more forward angle. I wanted it leaning at a more forward angle because we don't have much to support it from falling backwards. Okay. But when we get the dirt in there, the lean forward is going to kind of keep that in place, you know, where it's not going to be anything on the backside. Just throw but, some rebar in there, you'd be all right. But we ended up, uh, the whole idea was to, with the front wall and the back wall, since they're going to be, you know, directly aligned with each other anyways, that we were going to box those in, you know, build supports up the whole front wall, down the whole back wall, and then tie them in on the top with two buys across to kind of box that in with the walls in the middle of the two at an angle. So that being boxed in tight would hold those walls into place and we shouldn't have much of an issue. Because it's pretty much an eight foot by three but, and a half foot box. Let me tell you this though, Batman. This yeah. whole dirt drop thing yeah. is not going to be a one-time deal. Because every time it rains, which it rains yep. every damn day in the yeah. flow riders, and heavily sometimes. Oh, wait, hold on. We got the Punisher real quick. Says, what we up, do. brothers? We got to say hello so, and acknowledge him before he, before he dips in five seconds. Yep. <laughs> Appreciate you stopping by, though. Make sure you smash that like button on your way out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, fucking Jack Bauer says, just $1,400 plus for one with a team. And with stock folded, you don't need nods for it because you just spray and pray while smoking a cigar. <laughs> so style points for sure, dude. Go out If you're going out in the boog, dude, you might as well enjoy it. So, uh, second kind of cool is nothing fancy would yeah. say, dude, definitely respect, but yeah, I, I, I tend to like something a little bit more practical. You can get pro mags that do work cheap. Dude. <laughs> You're not helping your case, man. No, no. You're not helping the case, dude. The pu- That's what he's always good for every single time. Yeah. He says, what's yeah. up brothers. We comment on him being here and the fact yeah. that he's only going to be here for such a short amount of period of time. Yeah. He says, lol. And then God, he's gone. Nothing else. What do you mean he's gone? He's gone. There's nothing we can do. He's gone. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking guy, dude. But yeah. But shout out to Mike, dude. I fucking love me some Mike, dude. That's uh, part of the reason the water runoff and everything like that on on the dirt is the reason why I wanted to stick with the dirt for the most part. I guess it's actually going to be able to hold plants and everything, hold vegetation. Yeah, so you're going to be... It from eroding away too much. He says, I'm not gone yet. <laughs> Forget about it. Huh? Um, so, and it, for sure, because that is how it's supposed to be done. Yeah. But what are you going to plant, dude? Just throw some grass on there. Some grass, dude. Yeah. Imagine how boring. Well, I, I don't want to plant least... anything there that I'm going to be shooting at that I give a shit about. You know? Well, the, I'm, I'm not saying that you're going to eat the fuck. You're going to go put some bell peppers down there. Is not yeah, what I'm dude. saying. I'm saying, but like, so maybe some like orchids or something. Or some fucking, <laughs> maybe some lilacs. Yeah. Fucking, you know, we whatever. Did, we did actually joke about that because uh, Jenny wants to do a butterfly garden. Oh, jeez. That's a, a that's a t- wildflowers dude. and such to free targets, dude. Butterflies in the yard. Shout out to butterflies, dude. Butterflies are sick, which is cool. But technically, they're flutterbys, dude. And and I and I did propose the idea of having her just plant all her wildflowers all over the berm. Yeah, dude. You could have like super aesthetic Instagram photos with like monarchs and shit landing on your gun while it's resting yeah, awkwardly project or fucking precariously placed on a steel target or something against your yeah. flower bed berm, dude. Yeah, You're going dude. green, dude. Yeah. yeah. There's all types of things you could do with that, dude. Well, the problem it's is, fl- well, wildflowers are different. Wildflowers, they probably would rut pretty deep well wouldn't that just make the structural integrity of your berm better well yeah that's what i'm saying like a lot of the normal flowers that you get they don't really produce as much of roots they don't go as deep into the ground and everything but uh, with a lot of wildflowers they do much more so yeah you could just put a bunch of ferns on that motherfucker dude yeah or whatever a bunch in the front yard already so you can get free sand from the beach he says dude yeah dude just a pail a at a time, trips, dude. A lot of trips to the beach. Nah, you'd be all right. You got a fucking five foot bed, dude. You'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> little by little. I wonder what would happen, dude. What would be the you charge for that, dude? Fill up your bed if you just went to the beach and took some sand, dude. <laughs> what are they, they going to do, dude? I mean, I've <laughs> done it on a much smaller scale before. Well, of course, but like fucking... Like, if you're just sitting there filling up 50-pound bags and shit, throwing them into your fucking Colorado. I don't know. 
It'll come back, dude. There's just got to be a bunch of erosion of rocks for a couple centuries, dude. You get that yeah, right back, yeah. dude. Return on investment, <laughs> you know? But yeah, dude, free sand. Although, so when you dig down into the, that's what I was asking earlier, and I don't know if I ever got a straight answer. I'm sure you told me and then I didn't hear it or I forgot. But like, so it's like your dirt, like the prop is sand or there's it's, dirt anywhere on the property? It's a sand it's like a half mixture. Okay. But it's mostly sand. Okay. So could you still not, though, like unearth some of that and use it yourself for the berm? Like even if it's like you could dig up something probably behind the berm, go like five yards behind the berm, which nobody's going to see dig out a bunch of shit, use that to fucking reinforce the berm or at least pile up against the backside of the berm. Because again, strong winds, fucking gale force, hurricane shit, fucking a, a heavy rainstorm, whatever it may be. I would want it supported on both sides, not just the one, but I don't know shit about fuck. So, but it looks like you guys are, it's coming along pretty nice. Dude. It looks good. Yeah. But so the thing is, is like on the property already, because Florida is a very low standing state in its entirety. We have some uh, issues with drainage on the property, right? So we already have very low land that gets flooded very easily, and so we don't really want to take land away from anywhere. We already have the pond, which is... Well, you're not the U.S. government. And everything so. like that, yeah. So we already have the pond and everything for that. We did theorize just getting a, a excavator to dig out the pond a bit deeper and just dump all the dirt in front of the berm. But uh, to do that at any scale is like really expensive to rent a machine large enough to do that in a quick enough manner to be worth it. So. Yeah. I mean, I know you got a bad back and we, shit, dude, we, but we, fucking. We, we have dirt already on the prop from other projects that have been done that had to be dug out, such as the driveway we had put in. It was scraped down the whole top layer and piled up. The, the pool, the above ground pool, was dug down about a foot into the ground. So we got that dirt piled up. So we just Why wouldn't moved. you guys just dig your own pool and have an in ground pool, dude? Because that's not as simple as you could have just dug a hole and then put the above ground pool in the inside of the ground, dude. You'd have been fine. <laughs> but, uh, so we got dirt on the property already. We just need a simpler way of moving it. And then we still need more dirt brought in. Shovels in a wheelbarrow, dude. That's as simple as no, it gets, dude. You remember no, when they invented the it's, wheel? It's not. It's not happening. It's a great leap in technology. It's not happening. Why not? Because it's not. Because there's no fucking elbow grease left in those fucking. You need some uterine on those motherfuckers. I'll tell you what. Uh, old Ashy Larry it's looking just at. Not worth the effort for the amount of dirt that you need. Moving. If I was building a private range in my backyard, it would be fucking worth the effort no, to me. The amount my dude. of dirt that we need to move is nah, much dude, more. A couple cost little efficient. fucking. You just give them a couple of these. You'd be fine. No. <laughs> Put a little caulk on it. Some JB weld. It'd good be much to go. More efficient to slap it. You got to slap a... it. Slap it before you start shooting. You gotta slap it. it. Or to hire the dude that did our driveway. Did you just say you're off. carrying a Hellcat, dude? In a bucket? Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's fucked up. It's a bucket of shit. It surely is. Thing. It surely is. Yeah. Scales, did you build a house in the Everglades off grid and you're not telling us, dude? That would be sick, dude. You'd have a, a built in moat from every angle. That is true. For like miles at a time. Filled with gators and snakes. Hella gates, dude. And potentially piranhas. Have more kids, they can move dirt when older. <laughs> it's a, <be laughs> That's a good a solution. long-term plan. Right, well, again, Maybe you got to think ahead, 22's dude. 22's in the range for a while. Yeah. Well, you just you lock them up, dude. You build like a little a pen outside, a little yeah. playpen, dude, with barbed wire. And it's a shock fence because you have to condition them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... But yeah, Obviously. and they don't get ear pro either. They have to, no. it's right on the, they don't know ear pro, dude. The fucking, speaking of ear pro, <clears throat> we at competition today. Yeah. There was, uh, 
a family. Like the dad was shooting and then the wife was there with the daughter. I don't know how old the daughter was, but she was still in a stroller, but she was old enough to operate a fucking iPad. So, (laughs) so So at least six months. I have no idea. (laughs) Right. I have no idea. But, um, like you're out, you're outside given. So it's not nearly as bad. Like I could walk around outside while people are shooting with no ear pro. And like, I, it doesn't really bother me. It's not good for you. And it's not advised, but like, it's not like, ah, ah, but like, and I assume it's cause she's on the iPad. Right. But like yeah. her ear pro was beats by Dre. <laughs> I don't think that constitutes as an NRR, a Still noise. Des- and- canceling. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think so, dude. Maybe when you're on a phone call, I don't think it works for on the range, dude, but we see motherfuckers show up to the range with that shit all day long too. It's yeah. like they come up with a turtle beach headset. I'm like, bro, that's not how this shit works, dude. I'm sorry. But and by all means, dude, if that's what you want, you sure you don't want it? They're fifty cents, dog. You sure you don't want it? Yep. <laughs> but, but, but uh, it's fucking stupid. But yeah, that's. I wonder if that child suffered any permanent hearing damage today. I mean, I'm assu- I'm assuming that they're going to at some point in life anyway. So yeah, might as well be today, right? <laughs> but yeah, dude. It was a good time, man. I still think you should get out and shoot some competition. Did you say there's a range anywhere close to you that like does that kind of stuff? Do you know? I don't know if they do comp shooting, but I'm sure somewhere in Florida does. Yeah. And probably somewhere close enough. Like even if it is like an indoor range type of situation. Um yeah, dude, I'll just set up fucking courses in the backyard. No, that's fine. But you fucking it's about the accountability, dude. It's yeah. about people watching, it's about the timer, it's about the score at the end of it and fucking bragging rights or getting trolled or fucking whatever it is like kyle is not hearing the end of this dude because he was talking <laughs> shit he was talking shit all day long dude because over the over anything? over an idpa dude with all the fucking grandpas that he shoots yeah. with an idpa which shout out to idpa because realistically if you are trying to get really good impromptu training you know once or twice a month um for your carry gun it's definitely more realistic train like you fight type of shit. It's more scenario driven. You're shooting from concealment in theory. You should, you should shoot competition for IDPA with the gun. You actually carry uh, how you actually carry it with the same holster. And if you throw your mags in your pocket, throw your fucking mags in your pocket and see how you do, because that is how you're going to measure your realism as far as what the potential outcome could end up the whole time too, these other targets are not shooting back at you. Um, and then also see where you're going wrong, what you mean you need to improve or what you might need to change or fix. Like, Hey, I know it's uncomfortable and it prints more, but I should probably running a mag pouch instead of having to fish through my pocket with my keys and my everything else to get this mag, or maybe that works fine for you or, or whatever. But like, that's, that's how you test it out and uh, vet your shit. And then also improve your skills and become more confident um, in case, God forbid, you do got a skin of smoke wagon. Um, don't go smoking skin wagons, though. It's not good for your health. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, dude, I, I would get out there, man, and fucking try and do it at least once, dude, because it's fucking yeah. it's super fun. Everybody's super cool. There's a bunch of cool ass guns you get to see, you know, and it, it does help you. Like even like the first time I shot it, dude, I was hooked. I was like, this is fucking cool, dude. Everybody's cool. This is fun. I get to shoot in a way more dynamic situation than like just sitting at the range, fucking no rapid fire and fucking, which of course I don't listen to, but, um, but I don't have to. I still remember regularly when Kyle came back and yelled at me for no rapid fire on the range. And I said, fuck off, Kyle. Goddamn Kyle. And the dude next to me just looked at me like, what the fuck? (laughs) But yeah, dude, fuck it. He was talking shit. Like, oh, it's you. Okay, fine. Then she walks away. (laughs) He was talking shit all day, dude. All day. And of course, he's there with his girlfriend, too. Which Shout shout out to Kyle's girlfriend. Not going to dox her name or nothing or whatever, but (sighs) she's probably ashamed about it enough as it is. (laughs) She is this time. (laughs) I mean, she's always been of age. She just doesn't look it. Um, But super, super nice chick shout out to her she's cool 
but fucking Kyle was talking shit all day long, dude. He's like, dude, I got you on this stage. I got you on this stage. I got you, dude. I got you, dude. And I'm like, Kyle, there's no way in fuck you beat me on this stage, dude. There's no way in fuck. Cause like, while I don't completely understand what hit factor amounts to, like it's, it's the points you score per second, basically. Um, but as far as like the percentages and how all the points themselves and the procedurals or the no shoots or the mics calculate into it and all that shit. Um, but I can know what my hit factor is and then overhear what other people's hit factors are. And based on how I saw them shoot both in their movements, their timing, and then, you know, the actual hits on paper, I can approximate like how well, cause like there were stages there's stages out there that people will have like a 10 hit factor. They're scoring 10 points a second. And then there's stages like today's uh, qualifier where until the one dude that got first place in limited shot, um, I had the best hit factor for that stage and that was the one it was very confusing very and i fucked it up a little bit too so i'm surprised i even did as good as i did but there was three separate boxes on the ground three squares and you had you could only shoot from inside of them and it's virginia count which means there's comstock and virginia comstock is what uspsa normally is where you can shoot the target as many times as you want you have to shoot each target twice but you if you get an a and a c you could shoot it again to get two a's but is it worth your time can you shoot that makeup shot quickly enough to make it count yada 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 um but virginia count is you can only shoot this many rounds and if you shoot more than that you're penalized um and so you had to shoot one round on each target which is different because usually you're shooting two yeah. So that's weird. And then you had, to, they were all different angles. There was straight ahead, then to the right. Then you go to the center, there's two in the center. Then you go to the right, there's one, and then there's one left. And then you had a mandatory reload, and then you had to shoot strong hand. Right, left, move, two in the center, move, center, right. And then there was strings, so you had two separate strings. And then you did the same thing over again, first time, double hand, whatever, and then transition to your weak hand and do the same thing. And uh, you can only shoot from inside the boxes. You can only shoot one round per target. You can only shoot. Um, you It only counts if you do the mandatory reload, because if you don't do the mandatory reload and you automatically transition, every shot that comes out of your gun is a procedural and counted. I think it's down 10. Like you could zero a stage real quick. And that's the qualifier that is how you get your ranking. Um, cause I think it's after the first four in USPSA, you get your classification and cause everybody starts unclassified. I'm currently ranked as a C shooter, but realistically I'm a B shooter, but I always fuck up the qualifier somehow in some stupid way. Um, and then, but yeah, so the fucking up until the dude that beat me overall and limited, which again was shooting for not that it's the the gun it's never the gun but he's shooting a 40 cal gun which he again gets more points if i get an a zone hit it's five points if he gets an a zone hit it's five points if i get a c zone hit it's three points he gets four points for for a c zone if i get a d zone it's one point his is two points so uh or no it's three points yeah it, it's pretty significant. So that means he could have sloppier shots and move quicker and not have to worry about picking up all those A's and still beat out people shooting minor, but shoot nine mil. I get a couple more rounds in the gun, less reloads, less recoil, whatever. Uh, so it all balances out as long as you get your A's, but I had the highest hit. For, and this dude is like a sponsored, like on a team, a class shooter. And above that there's master and grandmaster. And then that's it. And, uh, He's the only one that beat me on the fucking, the qualifier in limited at least. So, but yeah, that's what you got to train. And that's, that's what I like about it. Cause they, they make the courses difficult for you. They make you get into awkward angles and positions. They make you shoot one handed. They make you shoot off handed. And a lot of people don't practice that because they're not good at it. They, they, they want to go punch bullseyes at five yards and they know, they know they could do it with both hands. Really, they should be doing it at 20 with both hands. Yeah. 
and then at 10 with one hand and at seven with your left hand. So, and so it gets you doing things that you normally don't do. And then it allows you to think, Hey, I sucked at that. I don't want to suck at that anymore. So the next time I am at the range, I'm going to practice that. So I think everybody should go out and shoot competition, dude. I would definitely look into it. But yeah, four feds, each of us, plus the boss listening to us. TT, a big D shooter, dude. That's right. That's what they called me in high school. He shoots all the big Ds because he's jealous. IDPA have a pocket sand division? Yeah, dude. Shasha, shasha. Did you win? If you showed up to IDPA and pulled some pocket yeah. sand out, dude, I would crown you king of the bro, match. I went Florida. I don't even need pocket sand, bro. It's just you just got impromptu ready. in the street sand. Just sand, dude. Ready for the taking at any point in time. <laughs> yeah. Nah, you're scared, dude. Grand Theft, Grand Theft Sand, dude. Grand Theft Beach. Life's a beach, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah. Either way. I'm getting tired. It's been a long day. I'm going to bed. Sure. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Scales, thank you for joining me. Yeah. Make sure everybody lives as constitution as you feel comfortable. Please, people. Please. And understand that shit is going crazy in the world. It has been for a long time, but the boiling point is reaching nigh. And uh, if you are not yet prepared as much as you possibly can be, then please go out and do that. You know, don't put yourself into debt. But when the boo comes, the bills don't. So... You know, whatever it is, live financially and morally responsibly. But, you know, again, it's not a joke. There's there's things you should have. There's skills you should have. There's knowledge you should hold. And, uh, you know, try and impart that onto the people that you care about as much as possible. And uh, stay tuned. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Leave it in the comment section below. Check all the links pinned in the comment section below, as well as the description box below. Especially those first three. Those are to help you fight for your God-given inalienable, constitutionally protected and reaffirmed, but inherent by birth gun rights. And uh, until next time, motherfuckers, we'll see you.